And we are live. What's up, guys? Today is the day. We got the big baller shop caller, Vadim from Honest Signals. And uh, as I'm sure you've seen me reference several times in comments and videos, I wanted to get Vadim on for a while. And the reason for that is because he is one of the few people, I would say it's a list that's in the single digits, uh, maybe low double digits of people who I think has really, really good game. And there's actually a lot you can learn from him. Uh, I would my, my assessment is that like your uh, your verbals and like your witticisms are just like fucking on point. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Thanks for having me, by the way. Yeah, just a little little v validation spike before we start the interview. So for anyone who, for anyone who's not familiar, just do you want to give like maybe a little uh, one minute overview about just you know who you are and whatnot? Uh, sure. I mean, I'm a dating and personal development coach you can also call me a pickup coach although you know i try to make it sound more mainstream and politically correct uh to cast a wider net these days but um yeah i teach men uh how to meet and attract women as well as um you know take it from the initial stages of the pickup to the dates, to how to manage relationships, because I feel like all of that is interconnected. And in the process, how to become, how to self-develop, how to become a better man, how to step up, you know, in all areas in life, because all these qualities that I teach are interconnected. And, you know, I started out making more comedy-based videos um, around the topic of pickup while also conveying a lot of the right principles. But then over time, it started developing into like, a more real business where you know i i taught people actual shit uh and uh that's it but here we are so what i do is i do live programs you know i do digital courses um but yeah that's it in a nutshell and i always i want to add and i always try to inject an entertaining element in my shit and that's important for me because it kind of captures my lighthearted attitude towards life Mm. Which I, I mean, that's, a lot of guys, which I think a lot of guys are, are are missing in general. I mean, I think that's definitely a thing I've noticed about your channel. Like, what what is your most? Uh, I think what, what was it like the most interesting man in the world picks up girls? Like, what well, that video hit like a million views or something like that? Like, you have some like really uh, really like pop popular videos that are mostly yeah. like entertainment based. But there's also like aside from the humor, which you get a lot of lols, there's also a lot of things you can learn from those videos. So that's definitely one thing I like a lot about your channel. From the yeah, from the comedic videos. Yeah, that was one of the videos that did uh, that did quite well. Um, uh, you know, over time, I started having mixed feelings about making comedy videos. I still do. I make them more infrequently these days. Um, although I still, on some level, have a passion for it. The reason I you know I have mixed feelings is that you know it's hard to juggle uh, entertaining with properly conveying good principles of game. There's a conflict of interest because inherently you're, you're being a clown when you're, when you're with these girls, uh -huh. right? You're, you're being kind of incongruent. So often when I would make those videos, there'd be this like inner conflict in me where I'm like, ooh, I like this girl. I want to do all the right things, but at the same time, game-wise, but at the same time, I want to make this an entertaining video. So I got to stick to my little jokes and you know the character I'm playing and that would sometimes, of course, inevitably sabotage the interactions on some level. Mm. Girls would be like, well, you know, <laughs> what is this guy about? But um, I guess everything has its purpose or its place in time. So, what, what would you do, like, in those situations, like, when, you know, like, you say, like, whatever, you world's most interesting man meets a girl who's really your type. You guys actually have a good interaction, which I saw you, you had a bunch of those. You get her number. Like, what do you do when you get her out? Like, do you, like, drop the act, or are you still, like, like what's, what's your approach there? Or you're like, yeah, you know, honestly, I was just fucking around that day. Or do you pretend like it uh, never no, happened? Yeah, no, no, of course, of course I would drop, I would drop the act. I, I would, uh, I would quickly tell her, tell her what. I would quickly uh, want to, or sooner rather than later, want to tell her like, hey, this is what's up. Sometimes what would happen actually is mid interaction, I would just like start cracking up myself or, or she would be like, yo, what's going on? And I would have to reveal that, you know, I'm, uh, I'm kind of playing a character. But then afterwards, it would just kind of continue half mm. in character, half like me just like hitting on her. And, you know, sometimes the camera would just like pick, pick stuff up. But it's but it's still be like a pickup though because she's still genuinely responding to you know what I'm doing, so it'd be like a variation of things that would happen. Yeah. 
Would you tell would you tell her like that she's uh, like you know this for a video or would you just kind of like leave that part out? Uh, well, most of the time, most of the time, I wouldn't say anything. Like, do you mean like at the end to like get? The yeah, 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 yeah. Not so much for the consent, but like just so like she knows like you're not like a weirdo, but like that. There's actually a reason why you were like putting on this role. Right. So usually I would um, I would try to kill two birds with one stone. And at the end of the videos, I would I would tell them one, hey, we're we're making this video. Can we get consent? Because mm -hmm. it'd be better. It's always better to get like the girls' faces, especially for the comedy videos, the more mm -hmm. mainstream ones. And by that same token, I could also tell her, hey, I'm not a, I'm not just some like vampire lurking <laughs> around. Um, uh, and I do like you. Ta da 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 da. So, but I would try not to reveal any of that until the end of the video, so I could. Well, yeah, no, of course. Reactions. Yeah. yeah. Roughly speaking, what percentage of the time would the girl uh, give consent to like be like, yeah, sure, you can put me in your video? <sighs> Just ballpark. Quite, quite often, quite often. Mm. With the comedy videos? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, with the other videos, I rarely ask for consent. Uh, sometimes with the vlogs. But with the comedy videos, often, often. Some, mm. some would eventually try to renege. <laughs> Renege, is that the right word? Re yeah. Take it back, whatever, uh, the consent. But most of the time, they'd be cool with it. Like, oh, ha, 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 funny video. Yeah, sure, why not? Yeah, I've had that happen a few times with, like, um, I've never filmed Infield. We're going to start filming Infield soon. But with, like, videos I made, I don't know if you've seen any of those videos, I make with chicks on my casting couch. and like, I've, seen, I, I've seen one of them with the live escalation. Was, yeah, yeah, that's the most popular one. Shit. But there's a few that that you haven't seen because I had to take them down because the girl would like after we shoot the video I finish editing it and then like two weeks later she's like hey you know I realized that I actually don't want to be in the video I'm like oh thank you for telling me now um, so I, yeah I had a few of those and it's like super would annoying. You, yeah that that's, that's I, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll always take it down I just I don't want like uh, whatever her to complain to YouTube whatever I'll, I'll if if so, if someone asks me like we th we had to take a few Larry reports down my policy is like if if you ask I'll take it down. Or I'll, well, first I'll try to like convince them to let me keep it. So I'll be like, okay, what if we censor this or blur that? And sometimes I can, but if they're like, no. Like I had uh, one of our contributing authors, he wrote like eight or nine articles, which were like personal lay reports of him. I'm not gonna mention his name, but if someone who's been like following the channel closely can probably figure out who it is. And he's a good buddy of mine. And he was like, yo dude, like I'm actually seeing a girl now. So uh, can you take all of those down? I'm like, fuck, it's nine articles. But I was like, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> well, with the videos though, you, you know, you can usually get, so YouTube's policy is you can just get video consent on video and that's good enough for them. So if a girl later changes her mind that I've had a few of those situations, I'd be like, well, I have her on video saying she's cool with it. Now, from a legal standpoint, written is always better. And I, and I haven't been too good with that in the past. Um, but maybe, it, maybe it is better to, to do that. Cause if you have a video that does really well. Fuck, man! Uh, like taking that shit down I know. changes Girl. your mind. That's that's painful. I know. I know. Most I know. of the time, I don't think they would take legal action. Not over something no. like a like a comedy video, right? Um, but uh, you can always just protect yourself YouTube wise with the verbal consent. Yeah. Uh, all right. So to to kind of change directions a little bit. So how did you get into uh, pickup initially? And how old were you when you got started? Um. So. I was 18, and <laughs> this is this is final year of high school, uh, or maybe 17 at the time, almost 18. And a guy that I was acquainted with just randomly mentions this book, Double Your Dating, David D'Angelo. Mm, okay. You know, we're we're roughly the same age, so you probably know. Um, and he's like, you know, it is just gonna it is just gonna shed so much light on the whole topic of girls and dating. It's going to double yeah. your dating. It's going to double your dating, exactly. Uh, and I was, man, I was getting no play at that point in my life. <laughs> so, and I was, I'm just a very curious guy by nature, so I had no judgments. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Well, let me check it out. Um, that's that's kind of how it, how it started. Actually, before that, maybe a few months before that, I had read my first self-development book, which I think kind of kick-started the whole thing. What was the book? The book uh, is called The Luck Factor, which is not an amazing book by 
you know, self-development standard books. Mm -hmm. um, it's all right. But the idea was that, hey, you can kind of make your own luck in life. Mm -hmm. And fuck, that principle in, in any area of your life, you know, is general. And that principle just resonated with me so fucking hard. So I think, um, I think that really kind of set the whole tone for, you know, everything that came afterwards. But yeah, Double Your Dating was the first, uh, the first book. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started kind of dabbling. And so what, at, what, at what point would you say you were like proficient? Like you were like, yeah, you know, I'm fucking, I got this. Like how long did it take you to go from just like starting to like being, getting good? Um, I guess it depends on what you define as good, but I would say, I would say by like 21. Okay. That's actually pretty, that's actually pretty fast. By like 21, I would say I had a decent hang of it because what happened at 21 was I, I did a semester abroad. So before that I was like dabbling here and there going on, you know, the odd couple of nights a week with friends trying shit out. I would say like, what is that? 18, 19, 20. Uh, I wouldn't say I was consistent by any means, but consistent enough. But then 20, 21, I did a semester abroad, I remember, uh, in France. And I just had a lot more free time. School was kind of a breeze when you're on these exchange mm -hmm. programs. Um, I had good logistics. I had my own place that was like pretty central to where the action was. And I, and I remember just really like immersing myself more. And that's where like I had some good momentum. Also pushed my comfort zone in many ways at that point, you know, gaming in like French, uh, you know, dealing with like all these international students, um, uh, being in a new country to begin with. So I think, yeah, around 21 was when things started to solidify, but I wouldn't say I was like proficient. <laughs> I would say proficient more by like 25. What, what, when did you start the channel? When did you start doing coaching? Uh, I started the channel 26. Okay. 20, 26. Yeah. Which is actually pretty much the same time I started like playing with five, which I was also 26. How, how old are you now? 33. Okay. Gotcha. And so what was the process like to go from when you were 18, you know, young, fresh Vadim, uh, to like, you know, actually, you know, starting a channel getting good like what was the would you say it was like pretty linear and straightforward or was it like really hard at first um like kind of give a give a little background on your journey there like on my journey as far as my like just a, yeah just actually 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 getting good at game like was there like any like epiphanies or you know like moments where you're like oh shit <laughs> many <laughs> as as i'm sure you've had um uh, yeah, many, it was definitely not a linear process by any means. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a very, very challenging and frustrating process. Uh, but a very interesting one for me. And I think that's sometimes what can say, you know, guys that, that, you know, end up, uh, end up doing really well in this area or getting really good is that there has to be this inherent, like, curiosity or passion or uh interest you know drive uh, yeah around the topic yeah where it's like no matter how frustrating and challenging and uh you know painful emotionally uh it is sometimes you're just like but fuck i'm so obsessed with this process this is so fucking fascinating that it kind of keeps you going um some epiphanies i mean there were a bunch fuck um hard to pinpoint any like i'll, I'll tell you one off i'll go ahead well, I, I remember just one, one off the top of my head um well maybe it wasn't an epiphany but i remember uh, at one point um i really started focusing on like being more physical with girls uh, -huh. uh this was maybe around the age of 23 24 or something you know prior to that i oh and i thought of another one i could share it could be interesting to talk uh -huh. about um prior to that i was very i was very verbal in my game and i you know I, I relied on being witty and interesting and blah 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 and you know that's that's good and it has its time and place but at some point i realized like fuck, there's this there's this power 
to being physical with girls. And, and, and it's not just about the physical element, it's about the also being having a certain kind of vibe. Uh -huh. And I mean, and maybe this is like where the two epiphanies kind of go hand in hand, actually. I started like, I remember having a summer where I just focused on learning to become physical. And I read this uh, book at the time by uh, one of the guys who uh, used to work for RSD, I don't know, he still does, Ozzy. Uh, and he had a book called The Physical Game. And I remember it, it opened it opened my eyes. Um, and I just, yeah, I focused the whole summer on learning to just be physical, uh, mostly in night game. <laughs> I had a lot of awkward situations, a lot of miscalibrations, but fuck was it powerful. Like, wow. That was that was just life changing shit, and part of that all was also like had to do with with gaming with your vibe, what I call it. So before that, I focused a lot on verbals, and I remember I tended to connect more with girls that are more intellectual, have better verbal acuity, where we can like click and have this witty banter, and that's great and all. Uh -huh. But then when it came to like, you know, more simple party girls, younger girls, and all that shit. Often I found like my shit would go go over their heads and it would just kind of be weird and awkward. And I'm like, what am I, you know, what am I doing wrong? But then I realized if you dumb shit down and game with your vibe, well, it's just it's you know, it's a complete game changer. Just it's it's more about the emotional experience and not like the cool, uh uh interesting witty thing you say to the girl, but like, you know, you push her and you say, You're goofy. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know? Or I don't know. I like koalas. Do you like koalas? Right, and that shit would work, you know. I mean, um, I, I've almost I've almost found that like guys who are a bit dumber have like a little bit of an advantage over like the guys who are really smart when it comes to game, just simply because yes. they they're, they're not overanalyzing it. They're just like titties. <laughs> ah! Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that kind of stuff often, like, it wouldn't make sense in my mind in the past. And a lot of smart guys don't get that either. Like, how are these guys saying, like, this dumb shit? Yeah. <laughs> and the girls are like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, those were, those were some two epiphanies. You were going to share yours. Yeah, my, my epiphany, I mean, I've had a bunch. But I remember a big one was, uh, you know, as most guys, I struggled with opening, right? I was like, okay, there's what's a good opener, right, with cold approach? So, at uh, like 23, I had just moved to L.A. And what I used to do is I used to kind of creep around the UCLA campus and just, like, approach girls there. And, like, you know, I was just trying, like, everything. Like, I was watching YouTube videos. I was just, like, Trump pulling shit out of my ass. And I had this, like, spreadsheet of openers and how many times a girl responded positively to it. So, I remember, like, I was, like, at the end of one day, I was like, okay this you know hey um you look cute what's your name opener seemed to really do well like okay that's gonna be the one and then the next day i would go and test the same opener and then it would do worse and then i would try a new opener and it would do better and then like this kept going for weeks i'm like why is there this inconsistency and i just remember one day i was on the bus because i was so poor i didn't have you know transportation uh in la and uh it hit me i'm like wait a second it's not the actual word it's the fact that these new openers are working because that's what actually comes to my mind and it feels natural rather than the exact words i say so instead of like pre-planning my openers i should just go with whatever comes to my mind first and then when i started doing that like my you know opener success rate like went through the roof and i was like holy fucking shit so there's like a lot of like moments like that where just like one piece of the puzzle just clicked for me i remember I remember another one was uh, for the longest time, you know, like, the, what do they say? Like, using uh, shirtless selfies on Tinder is cliche, girls don't like that, blah, 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 blah. That was, like, the assumption. And then I saw this one blog. He was like, yo, I'm fucking getting a lot of girls with my shirtless app pics. I'm like, this guy's fucking lying. But, like, let me test this. And sure enough, shirtless app pics, more DTF girls. I'm like, oh, like, fuck. So it's like, you know, I started questioning also a lot of the assumptions I had about game and what I thought I knew because a lot of what I knew at the age of 21 was complete nonsense which i realized later yeah like there's going to be a natural evolution to uh to a lot of these preconceived notions we have or ideas of what we think works uh due to identities that we might have created i mean there's a bunch of factors that go into it you know um culture identity uh, things we've read or experienced things our friends have told us yeah. So the I mean, shirtless, the shirtless stuff works. That's funny. Would you say like more with uh, with a certain demographic of girls, like maybe like younger, more party like? 
more and more just chicks who are more on Tinder to hook up. So the more DTF girls. But here, here's an interesting thing. So I've talked about this in other videos. So at one point I was running two Tinder profiles, right? So I had my regular Tinder profile, which is, you know, pictures of me and like, you know, like maybe a little bit of like tongue in cheek sexuality in the bio. But, you know, that was pretty much it. I had a second Tinder profile, which didn't have one single picture of me. It was a fake abs pic and a bunch of BDSM memes. And in the bio, it said, like, uh, can't show face due to work, looking for a girl who likes it rough and sensual, uh, message me, and if you're hot, I'll send you a picture of my face. Like, it, it was a little bit better than that, but this is just, it's, it's, that was, like, the theme of it. And so what I noticed is that from my regular profile, maybe I would get, like, 20 matches a day, right? Uh, and out of those 20 matches, maybe one of them would come through. On the DTF profile, I would get maybe four matches a day. But like out of those, one or two would come through. So even though I got less matches, the chicks who match with a very DTF profile, when you're very explicit, they're way more likely to actually follow through and for you to meet up with them. So that was like another interesting realization I had. That's not so much about, you know, the, like just that, the assumption is that if you're too sexual, girls are going to be more flaky, blah, blah, blah. But it's actually almost the opposite because, you know, there's a lot of guys who are just playing normal game. But you have like this out there sexual profile, which unfortunately you cannot do anymore because Tinder will just ban you right away. But uh, back in the good old days, if you did that, like you would actually probably do better than having your you know regular profile. Like, like I said, I didn't have one single you know picture of myself on there. Yet I was no getting face, just, just zero face. Yeah, not even my abs, just some, I was like skinny as fuck back then. This is when I was like 25, dude. I was like 135 pounds of pure skinny Russian. And um, yeah, dude, it was just like some random fake ab pics that I found, but you know, still did the trick. And so the conversions were still the same, if not higher. Okay. The conversion rate was much higher. It was that there was a lot less volume coming in. So the total amount of girls. So the results ultimately were like more the, or less the same the results were the same but the conversion was something like 25 50 percent versus yeah. on a regular profile it's like five ten percent interesting interesting and i guess uh and i guess tinder this was on tinder right yeah tinder okay and tinder would have let's say about you know a higher concentration of girls that are more down to hook up especially maybe if they're under 25 I would say that age wasn't really a factor. Like, I had some, like, 40-year-old really? MILFs who were just like, oh, my God, like, my husband is out of town. I need to get laid. Like, you know, I had this one chick roll up. She was, like, she rolled up in a Lamborghini or some, some really fancy car. And uh, she was like, you know, we were drinking wine, like, before before sex or maybe after, I forget. But anyway, she was like, I asked her, like, because I knew she was married. So I was like, I was like, so, like, you know, I was trying to, like, figure out why. And she was telling me about her husband. And she's describing him like, wow, this guy sounds like a fucking baller. Like, multi multi-millionaire, like, you know, fucking does cool activities, is jacked. Like, I'm like... Honestly, this guy sounds a lot cooler than me. Like, you know, she's describing him. And I'm like, I'm like, what, what, what do you find that is lacking? And she's like, he doesn't have sex with me. He just has me piss on him. And I was like, what? You know, she's like, yeah, he has me follow this very strict diet. And he can tell when my pee tastes off. And he just has me piss on his face. And that doesn't really get me off. I'm like, all right. Noted. <laughs> so, so that gets him off, but then he won't fuck her? Yeah, something like that. That's, that's weird. She was, what, 40? She was like yeah, in her forties. Interesting. I do, you know. I will say though uh, that, you know, as far as casual sex goes, or girls being down for something more casual, and this is of course a generalization, but I find like it'd be like girls under twenty-five or girls over thirty-five. Interesting. Because, I, because anything in between, it's like girls are looking for something serious because they're still very hopeful that something serious can manifest, you know, as they're uh -huh. approaching their 30s or still in their early 30s. Once girls start to, like, you know, give up on the idea or become a little, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, pessimistic about the idea, or maybe they've gone through a divorce and all that <laughs> shit, then they're a lot more likely to want to go back into the casual game or I'll take what I can get within reason, of course. But um, hmm. you, you, you will you will start to notice stuff like that. <clears throat> let me let me ask you this question: On average, what is like the average age of your booty calls? Booty calls. Just the gr girls who you're seeing more consistently, not like a one night stand. Maybe girls who you're dating or girls who you whatever you're you're, you're meeting up more than once, basically. Well, right now, right now is uh, right now. I've been seeing like one girl more more seriously, where it's kind of going in that direction. Um, I guess 
it hasn't yet become exclusive. So, you know, before that, um, sorry, the average age is the question, right? Yeah, because I've noticed personally for myself, like I was kind of just doing some reflecting. I've noticed that like, I, I hook up with girls from all ages, but in terms of the girls who I consistently see, they're not super young. They're all like 30, 32, 33, 29. Like that's kind of the age range of the girls who become consistent lovers. Like the young, the chicks were like 19, 20, they're great in bed, but then they're too focused on partying and shit. For whatever reason, either they piss me off or they drop off themselves. And then like the super older chicks, eventually they're like, you know, the mills, they're eventually like, yeah, you know, I'm not gonna have anything with this guy because he's a lot younger than me. So I just find that like, for me, like the chicks who are in there like, either late 20s early 30s consistently are the girls who i have like more long-term type of shit with 20s early 30s okay so so i guess maybe the, the question confused me a little so to be clear you're asking because you said booty calls but you're asking what girls are more likely to want to have something on a more ongoing basis yeah, I mean, the, the question the question is for you, what have you noticed in terms of the girls who you who you see more than once? Like, well, roughly speaking, what age range are they in? That's a good question. Um, like the chick who you're talking about that you have something right now, like how old is she? Well, she's in her late 20s. Okay, she's so. In her late 20s. <laughs> um, that fits the box. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's I, I haven't thought about that. Like if I were to look at my history, um, because, you know, in the last few months, like starting the summer, it was kind of bit like a bit of all over the place. And then I wouldn't see too many girls more than like two, three times. Mm. Um, there were only like since the summer, two girls that I've been seeing more consistently. And they were both in their, let's say, late 20s, 27, mm. 28. Um, but in the past, I don't know if I, if I remember any like patterns emerging. Mm. Yeah, food. I think I think I think it would vary. It's something to think about, I guess. Yeah, food for thought. Uh, okay, on a different note, so uh, you know, you've been coaching for a while. You've met a lot of guys. I'm sure you coach. Are you noticing any patterns in terms of? Because you like, okay, like there's so many guys in this pickup community, and the sad fact of the matter is. I would say the majority of them suck year after year. Like they, they sucked five years ago. They're exactly you know at the same point they are now. Maybe they're a little bit better. It's all I would say like like yeah. Of course, there's some guys that you know pick up fast and crush it. But a lot of guys just stagnate. What's been your experience? Why guys are either not getting good or just taking so long to get good? Yeah, busting out the deep questions tonight. Yeah. I, you know, I think about stuff like that all the time. Um, actually, there's a lot of reasons. I would say, okay, well, let's start. Let's start with one that immediately comes to mind. I think a lot of guys are actually very confused as to why they're doing this. Mm. And this is a and this is a crucial, crucial point, crucial thing to think about, because it's almost like. You know, on the surface, it's almost obvious. Well, like, I just want to fuck girls. You know, I want to have more girls in my life, have good sex, da 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 And it's like, okay, yeah, we're all inherently um, sexually driven, you know, some more than others. Um, we all want female companionship, et cetera. But I think it's very important to understand on a very deep level, and that, that can't always happen quickly. Uh, it's important to understand on a deep level, like what it is you really want out of this process, because there is a lot that can be accomplished from this process of be becoming good with women, right? It's it can be sexual abundance, uh, or let's just let's just call it a romantic abundance. Okay, it could mm. be um, it could be having amazing sex. Okay, exploring the frontiers of amazing sex. Okay, it could be um, having experiences with a variety of different women. Okay, not just sexually, but just emotionally, as far as lifestyle. I think that's that's very interesting. That, that's something that's been very interesting for me. You know, uh, what is it like to date a party girl? What is it like to date a girl who's a professional? What is it like to date a girl who's a hipster, an intellectual? Um, I don't know, a girl who lived in L.A. A girl who is French, blah, blah, blah. Right. <laughs> a girl who sucks dick by the side of the freeway. A girl who sucks dick by the side of the freeway. Okay, so, right, you start thinking about the, the things that, you know, you can get out of this journey, okay? So, um, 
um, exploring frontiers of sex, a variety of, um, of feminine energy and experiences, um, developing the abundance, developing the freedom to choose, okay? Stepping up as a man in life, giving yourself permission to step as a, up as a man in life, uh, learning what it means to get shit done, okay? To not be a pussy, okay? Mm. That was a big one for me. Um, to to connect, to have meaningful relationships. So, okay, and then you look at all that, right? Or you know, or are you looking for some kind of valid, some kind of quick and dirty validation? You know, um, so you start looking at all of that, and then you also start thinking about how does this fit into the context of my life, and that can change at various times in your life, and you have to be very realistic about that. Okay, if you are in the process of like growing a business which takes 80 hours of, of your time. Oh. And then suddenly you tell yourself, well, I also want to get good at game, but I don't know why. And then it fucking dawns on you that that takes, that's a full-time job in itself. Well, then you're just going to get lost and confused and discouraged. So it's very important to have those kind of uh, conversations with yourself and, you know, guidance, external guidance helps as opposed to just like, uh, aimlessly going out, not knowing why, um, not knowing how it fits into your life. Like sometimes, you know, guys are not even in the headspace to be gaming. Okay. And, and yet they're forcing themselves and there is, oh. and there is a certain principle to like pushing through and like, you know, uh, stepping up, uh, action equals motivation and not the other way around. There is a certain truth to that. But at the same time, if, if you're focused on building this business, you know, or I don't know, your your dad's really sick and you have to like spend time with him and your head is elsewhere. Well, then don't force the game stuff, especially if you don't know why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. I think that's one big, big problem. Let me just quickly add on something you said. Um, yeah. I think that, uh, yeah, because you, you talked about how guys like, you know, they, they're, they're kind of forcing themselves to do things they don't like. Uh, and I think a lot of guys forget that there's many different ways you can be a woman. And I don't know why, but there's this assumption in the pickup community that if you want to get laid, you have to go to clubs. And a lot of guys like me, I fucking hate clubs. Dude, I do pretty well <laughs> in terms of chicks. I haven't been to a club in over five years. Like, I never fucking go to clubs simply because I don't like loud music. I don't like have to have a scream. I like to be able to have a conversation. I don't like just fucking dancing and all that shit. So the only reason, I, the only way I will go to a club if, if there's ecstasy involved, right? That's like the only the only possibility. So, but like a lot of guys, I see, I hear them like, they're like, oh God, all right, another night at the club. All right, they're not they're not drinking. They're not like partying. They're just like at the club to do approaches. I'm like, dude, like you're fucking torturing yourself. Like there are better ways for you to get laid. And like I'm not even saying online, just fucking day game, fucking going to you know, whatever, like some activity that you actually enjoy doing. Like for example, me, I like walking my dog, right? So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna combine that with picking up girls, walk my dog, and pick up chicks, right? Like I'm not gonna force myself to go to a club. So yeah, I just want to kind of quickly throw that in. Well, that's an interesting point, and you know, on the one hand, I agree with you, but there's a caveat to that, which is, yes, you should ultimately do what's congruent with you. So, first of all, you know, let's say on a very macro level, I tell guys, think about why it is that you're trying to get good at this to begin with. Okay, uh -huh. you know, I've actually had clients that would come on program just to learn how to improve their social skills, networking, how to like step up as a man, et cetera. Mm. And they were in relationships. I had one guy who was like expecting a baby with his girl and he was super in love with her, but he, he wanted the experience of the boot camp just to like step up in life and mm. be more social, et cetera, et cetera. He also uh, did, he also went to the army, did a, a year or two in the army for the same reasons, because it was a very valuable experience. Mm. Um, but, um, that guy's going to crush it in life. Like, with that attitude, that guy's going to be fucking successful. Dude, and I mean, this is the kind of guy that when he was on my program, I'm like, okay, this is not a tough case student by any means. Like, mm -hmm. this guy was pretty charismatic, social, cool. So it was a very fun kind of experience. And those kind of guys uh, learn really quickly. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. But uh, what was the point I was making um, before I got sidetracked? What was your question, sorry? It was about, like, why are guys not getting good? Where I go, oh, okay, I said that there's a caveat. To and motivation. Point. Yeah, caveat to your point is that, okay, macro level, you want to figure out why you, you want to do all this to begin with, this entire mm -hmm. journey, okay? And then how it 
uh, fits into your lifestyle. But, and, and ultimately, you might prefer certain things over others. Like, in your case, I don't know, uh, picking up girls while walking the dog, doing online gaming, you know, uh, maybe day game, whatever it is. Maybe meeting girls, you know, at art events. So it's cool to figure that out as well. Um, having said that, sometimes you can't get good until you do the things that you don't like. Mm-hmm. So I would say even if you... So it, it's good to transition to that once you are good. But, um, for example, if you don't like loud nightclubs or, or bars or night game environments, um, or if one doesn't, I would still say that, hey, that, in my opinion, is still a very necessary uh, tool to get good for for most guys. If you're mm-hmm. already super charismatic and confident and physical with girls, um, then maybe I would say, okay, you, you don't have to. But if I feel like you're the kind of guy where you need to deal with an, an environment that, like a night game environment challenges you. It just like pushes down on you in all kinds of ways. It overwhelms mm-hmm. you. And it teaches you to push back. So I would say you might need to do that. And then at some point you might say, all right, well, I don't want to meet women in clubs anymore, but I've built the skill set to do that. Uh So I personally was had always, uh, I would say mixed feelings about night game. Um, But I kind of forced myself to, to do it because of the challenge. So two, two, two points on that. I think that um, I, a key thing I should have distinguished is why, for example, you don't like clubs. Do you not like clubs because you're intimidated by that kind of environment, right? Which is definitely, if that's a situation, you should you right. know, push yourself through that. Or do you not like clubs, for example, because you're like me and your voice gives out after 20 minutes and after 30 minutes at a club, I sound like this. Like, you know, like, so it's, it's like, it's like, why exactly do you not like the venue? And second thing, right. like, I would say that, you know, night game itself, like, I, I for sure think that if you're trying to get good at a game, you should do night game. But it's like, you know, you have clubs, you have, you know, you have dot bars, you have lounges and you have like everything in between. So like, I do think that it's good to try everything at once, but then like stick to environment where you you actually have the best time. Like, you know, for me, it's more like, I like more like chill dive bars, you know, like that type of shit. But yeah, so I think it comes down to a lot of, but I have friends who like to fucking go to clubs and dance and shit. Like, you know, they love that shit. So for them, they don't like the, you know, dive bars. So just, I think a lot of it also comes down to like, you know, being congruent with what you want. Absolutely. Um, yes. Uh, let's call night game a uh, high stimulus environments. Okay. Um, and, and let's call day game low stimulus environments because you can do day game at night on uh, Lincoln Road, for example, on like an outdoor, um, what's the word I'm looking for? An outdoor shopping area. But anyway, oh. when, when it comes to high stimulus environments, yes, I personally, for example, my my bread and butter is like a more chill, loungy kind of vibe where there's like softer music playing and you can have conversation, but you could also maybe you know dance and vibe out for me, like that's like the best kind of night game environment. Restaurant, hotel lounges, um, uh, loud clubs. Not my favorite, unless like I'm getting drunk or high, uh, <laughs> and maybe going with a group. But sometimes I, you know, I don't mind gaming in those kind of environments as well. But yeah, pick pick what you like ultimately. Let me ask you a follow up question. Do you find that? Um... The guys who are, whose main motivation is so is like really like I just want to get really good at game. Do you find like my observation has been that like those guys are actually a little bit of a disadvantage to the guy who's like yeah I just want to have a lot of hot chicks in my life and I want to like I don't really g- care about like how good my pickup skills are. I more care about the results and the kind of girls I have in my life. Do you find that like the first you know the first category of guys actually a disadvantage? Hmm. Okay, let's let's be very clear on this question, uh, so I don't misinterpret. Are the guys um, are the guys that say they just really want to get good at game potentially at a disadvantage uh, to the guys that just want? Uh, hot girls in their life lifestyle yeah, the guys the guys who don't really care how good their pickup skills are they're just like dude like i got a hot girl last night i have hot girls in my life like i don't care if like your cold approach skills are better than mine versus some guys they're all about like okay i i, I don't you know for me it's all about having the best pickup skills um I wouldn't necessarily say they're at a disadvantage. I would say that it depends on what you want. And this is where I think it comes down to um, 
really trying to understand why you're in this. So, for example, for the guy who really wants to get good at game, if we start to dissect why he really wants to get good at game, and those goals, let's say, are meaningful or, or noble uh, in his eyes, then then I would say, okay, cool, do that. Like, you know, for me, um, you know, one of the big motivations was, you know, stepping up, you know, uh, learning to be more assertive, more confident, learning to be more comfortable in different environments. And I found that um, that, that was uh, a really good avenue to do that, uh -huh. uh, you know, to be more charismatic in the process, et cetera. Because I, I also knew that um, that it wasn't just about the girls, it's about how this affects the rest, you know, the rest of my life. But I just saw that avenue as the best way of doing that. Of course, there are other supplementary avenues, you know, that, that, that can help you step up in life, building a business, I don't know, uh, running some kind of uh, initiatives, uh, doing some kind of a fitness boot camp, traveling solo, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it comes down to what you want to do and what you want to get out of it. Now, if another guy is just like, well, I don't know, I don't really care about that stuff or I'm already pretty happy with my charisma skills, my confidence skills, you know, I really want to focus my energy on building a business, for example or I'm more passionate about fitness, but I do want hot girls and a cool lifestyle. Well, that's just a different kind of priority and mindset and that's fine. Yeah, I guess I guess kind of where I was going with this was like, I've just noticed like myself, like um, with guys who are like, yeah, I really want to get, get the best pickup skills. Like I'll see situations where like, they're talking to a chick who's into them and that chick might actually be down to go home with them if they spend like 20 or 30 minutes, but then like they bust out of the set and I'll be like, why, well, why did you leave the set? Like, oh man, like I don't want to get stuck on one girl. I want to do more approaches. I want to practice my skills. I'm like, okay, so you're just going like, to talk to a bunch of girls, but like that chick would have gone home with you. Like, right. So right. like. That's kind of like the observation I've made uh, with some guys. But let, let me ask you this. So on a, a little bit of a different note. Yeah, that's just that's just self sabotage. That's just uh, bad. Um, that's just poor. What's the word I'm looking for? It's not. It's just not good process wise. But yeah, I get it. That happens all the time. Self sabotaging behavior disguised as oh, uh, I'm just practicing my playing cool skills. You know, no, bro, you're just self sabotaging <laughs> out of fear because it started to get good and you were like, well, what if I fuck it up? Right, right. I mean, self sabotage is definitely like a very common thing that you see amongst guys who are trying to get good. Like, that's could yeah. be one of the biggest things. I mean, I had a roommate um, who, like, I, I, I've just never seen this level of self sabotage in my life. It's like almost comedic level of self sabotage. Like, he constantly is like, dude, I'm not, I'm not getting any girls. I'm not getting any girls. Can you help me? Can you help me? I was like, yeah, sure, dude. I'll help you. I'll help you. It's okay. And then basically, what I made him do was, I'm like, all right, dude, I want you to have a spreadsheet on your computer. And, you know, you, because you're talking to a lot of girls. So, you know, so when you're going to follow up with her, when your dates are set, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay. And then, like, the next night, he'd be like, dude, I couldn't get any girls for tonight. Fuck, fuck. I was like, all right, let's take a look at your spreadsheet. And I'm like, why does it say that you have a date with this girl at 8 o'clock? And he's like, oh, shit. I totally forgot about that. I'm like, how, how the fuck? What happened? Oh, you got muted for some reason. Let me, uh, can you hear Amazing me now? Thing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you know what? My Bluetooth might be acting. Let me plug my other head. Uh-oh. Uh, uh <laughs> Not this again. Can you hear me now? Okay, hang on. Let me switch switch this up here. Audio. All right. Say something. Yeah. Say something. Hello. Oh yeah, no, bro. It, it, uh, you hear me well? Now it's That's better. Uh, it's 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 not as good as the Bluetooth. Say something else. Hang on. No, let me plug in uh, some other headphones. Hang on. I mean, th th uh, this is okay. This is okay? You're really not... loud for some reason. Really? Hang on. You know what I want to try? Let's try something else for a sec. You're muted again. How is this? Um, it's fine. It's fine, or I put another headset on. 
I mean, it's, it's not as good as the, the Bluetooth was really good quality. Like now it's like there's a little bit of echo. Let me try one more. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to just take a few questions while uh, the Dean figures this out. Uh, this is my favorite question. Yo, Alex, just found your stuff. Big fan of it. Thank you, sir. Uh, good to have you. Oh, we got we got a girl watching this. Marigol Plastorgos. It's like a Greek last name. So no other girls in here. Cool. You're the only one. Marigo, you have hundreds of guys. Actually, 95 to be exact. 95, 95 single horny guys. All your fantasies might come true. All right, how does it sound? Say something, Vadim. Uh, hang on. Okay, how is that? Um, say something else. So today we're going to be talking about the art of candle. Yeah, let's let's let's, 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 let's fine. That's fine. I don't want to like okay. get too off trapping. But anyway, the point I was trying to make is that this guy, like, I saw him self sabotage. Is this better? Sorry, last try. Is this better or no? Or is the other one better? No, no, that's worse. This is better. Uh, say something else so today we're going to be talking about good stuff it's good yeah. enough good enough anyway oh so the, yeah so this guy was self sabotage like crazy that was basically the point of the story um but anyway so what, what i did want to what did he ahead. do he you're saying he had a he had a date that he didn't show up to yeah he would just like miss dates and like i would i'll be like why he's like oh shit i forgot but like all he did all day every day which is not something you should do as a man is just focus on tricks yet he would like forget about dates he had like he has nothing else going on like that was literally his focus and then like you know a chick would be like you know down to hang out with him and he would set a date for like a week from now i'd be like why did you not set the date for like tomorrow like why a week he'd be like oh you know i need time to prepare i'm like what the fuck are you gonna prepare for like all you're gonna prepare is for a higher chance of her flaking so um but anyway <laughs> yeah i've seen i've seen all, all kinds of shades of uh self-sabotage yeah it's it's pretty mind-blowing sometimes i think that if you do catch yourself self-sabotaging you really gotta sit down and like honestly reflect on why um why you're self-sabotaging well, you well yeah and a lot of guys just you know until it's pointed out they don't they don't really realize that, yeah. that they are they, they almost think it's like bad luck or something like that oh like all these girls they just don't like me meanwhile like i'm not showing up on the date uh but she would have flaked anyway so it doesn't matter she would have flaked anyway yeah they're protecting themselves i mean this this can go deep depending yeah, on the, what kind the, of tra traumas you've had identity crises etc so that's a whole for, other conversation <laughs> yeah for sure i do i do want to ask you so what were like some of your um like big inspirations when you're getting into game like which guys did you follow or did you just kind of figure it out on your own um i would say one of the biggest ones was david d'angelo okay um i actually still recommend some of his shit to to clients uh not all of it is relevant in this day and age uh but a lot of a lot of this time a lot of the stuff is timeless you know and he's got some really really good programs and uh he's just got a good vibe a good good voice um he he also just knew how to aggregate information really well how good he was with women ultimately we will never know he probably was decent judging by his vibe and character but the way he aggregated information and programs um was uh was was really impactful so <laughs> i remember one of the things that he would recommend back in the day this is early 2000s is don't ask for the girl's number ask for her email and i remember doing that a bunch of times and it actually it actually kind of worked like magic um, no way really oh yeah yeah because the idea was that okay now of course of course you have to factor in you know how good your game is and how comfortable you make the girl feel up you know upon the initial interaction right if you're not really if you're not really like that great yet and you don't know how to like build enough rapport and navigate all that shit initially then the power of the email was hey the number is not that big of a deal 
I'll just shoot you a line and we'll take it from there. But in the process, you exchange a couple of emails and they feel so much more connected and comfortable with you. And then you'd be like, so I guess this is the part where I trick you into giving me your phone number, haha. Ha. And uh, yeah, it would work seamlessly. Do you feel though that that was effective because this was like over 10 years ago where where like texting wasn't really as much of a thing yet? And like, well, I guess it was, but it wasn't as like, you know, email was like more of a thing back then, if that makes sense. Like, did you find oh, yeah, this was the, time, the timing of it, like pre-Instagram? Yeah, 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 obviously, yeah. This was this is when texting and, and Instagram, texting was, I guess, more more minor. Yeah. Yeah, but also because they, they didn't have to give their phone number out. Uh, so it was like lower pressure if the girl doesn't feel comfortable enough yet. Uh, and yeah, pre-Instagram, obviously. So. My, my counter argument be is that if a girl is not comfortable giving her number, you're not going to get her on a date anyway, at least like the vast majority of the time. So I, like I tell my clients like, oh, you know, talking to this girl and she just wants to, you know, exchange Snapchats. I'm like, going to be 99% of the time, it's going to be a waste of time. Like if that chick is not down to fucking give you her contact information, she's not going to be down to let you put her your penis in her vagina. Like it's just... Well, I mean, yes and no. There are caveats to this because sometimes it's not about... It's not necessarily about um, how good your game is and your vibe and all that stuff. Uh, of course, it's all a spectrum, but sometimes it's just a con the context of how you met her, the, the product of circumstance. Maybe it was like she was in a rush. Maybe she was in a bad mood. Maybe it was late at night on the street corner as she was coming back from a bar and she was kind of on edge. Hey, woman, <laughs> give know? me a fucking email. And it's like... You know, and like maybe in, in that moment, given her headspace and the circumstance, a number might have been like, ooh, too much of a commitment, even though it's irrational, you know, uh -huh. it's like you can block someone. Whereas, oh, sure, I'll give you my email, my Instagram. Like, I, I wouldn't recommend going for emails these days, but like something lower commitment, <laughs> then it's like, okay, sure. It would be kind of funny if you get a chick's email and you sign her up for like all these like email marketing lists. So she just gets bombarded with fucking emails like Viagra now on sale for nine ninety nine. Like she's getting like fucking her emails just destroyed. Oh, that would be funny. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, what were you asking? Oh, back to the influences. David D'Angelo was big, um, and there were a few other guys along the way who I learned some stuff from like but you got to cherry pick what was good so i wouldn't like i don't know they're like mystery was one of them uh -huh. but like that was a lot of old school technique stuff but you know there, there were some good elements uh -huh. rsd started at some point um to become shit <laughs> well i meant no at some point they started transitioning to more natural game yeah and, okay yeah, yeah yeah and that was like i think like a big a big move in the industry which uh you know, rubbed off on me for sure. And uh, seeing some of their, like, you know, infield, when infield was not very accessible, yeah. definitely I, helped me. I resonated with a lot of the stuff that they were teaching. Um, that's when RSD was, I think, at its best, when they just started transitioning to natural game. Like, this was, we're talking, like, 2010, 2011, something like that? Yeah, yeah. And then 2012, even to, like, 2014, 2015, there was... There was some good stuff. Oh, oh, that, there definitely was, dude. Like, there's like old school Julian um, was had some really really good content. Yes, but you know you have to understand how to do stuff like that. You know how to do it in moderation and how to make it congruent. Whereas a lot of guys would misinterpret that stuff. Yes, you know, would start choking out girls out of context. Yes. <laughs> So that's that's where it can be dangerous. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it was very funny, almost satirical at times. You know, you yeah. have a dark sense of humor. Yeah, the, the the claw opener got abused like crazy. I was living in LA, like right around the time that video came out, and you saw all these like really nerdy, awkward guys just clawing girls, and there's the girls like, get off me, weirdo! You know? And I'm like, why didn't it work? <laughs> Maybe I didn't claw her hard enough. Yeah, so. Versus like charming, charismatic, you know, smooth flowing Julian could pull it off. But then like right. you have these guys who are like super stiff, like the last thing they should be doing is just trying to randomly claw a girl. <laughs> so yeah, that was there's definitely some some oh, man. En enable for some comedy. Or these guys who are just like calling girls dogs, but like it was just so incongruent because they're like these really, really nice, sweetheart guys, and like, you're a dog. Like the girl like, what? What'd you say to me? Psh, psh, psh. 
Oh, the amount of comedic shit I have witnessed on this journey. Oh boy. There's that's one thing I will definitely with say with pickup. Too, you know, with myself too. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's so much comedy with like with pickup and getting good with girls. It's like you have to be able to laugh at it because otherwise you're just gonna burn out. And that's a very important principle I teach. If you start taking this shit seriously and personally, you will never get good. And this applies not just to pick up and, and you know and getting good at game. It applies to any domain of life. If you start building some kind of a rigid identity around this, taking oh, shit for sure. personally. I think the minute that you're going to stop growing and start going downhill is the minute where you think you've already learned it all. Like where you think you're like, I'm already an expert. I don't need to... When you start to build an identity around being an expert, it's only going to be downhill from there. I agree. That's another. That's another important point. Yeah, you always have to be fluid and open-minded, willing, willing to to evolve and you know be scientific about it as well. Yeah. Let me ask you one last question before we jump into uh, the Q and A. What were some of your uh, What are some of your favorite books? Like your biggest influence in terms of things you've read. You seem like a well-read man, Vadim. So. <laughs> uh, there are many books uh, from different domains. Let's see. Let's see. Well, that book, uh, the physical game, is uh, is a good one. Ah, <laughs> classic! Something you should every man should have in his library. I mean, uh, I mean, like just you know, with in any um, what's the word in any regard. Or yeah, yeah, just some of some of your favorite books, like the books you've gone back to and read time and time again. Or the books I recommend. The way you say it is a big one I recommend to my clients. Uh, uh, I've never heard. I've never heard of that one. Um, it's about vocal tonality and pacing and just how to how to to be a more engaging speaker. Uh -huh. uh, as far as not so much as far. Well, she covers like the wording as well, but like developing like a good voice and pacing. Okay. Uh -huh. Because I cannot stress this enough, so I want everybody to write this down and tattoo this on their arms. Voice is the most important thing. What was sorry you kind of brought voice, voice. voice? Okay, or one of the most important honest signals. Okay. Can you can you elaborate on that? Like, what do you mean exactly? So your vocal uh, tonality having a more resonant vocal voice. Okay, so there are usually three types of um, vocal tonalities. You've got the nasally voice when you're pushing the air into your nose like this, and you know, like you'll you'll have some guys, some gay guys, or some very feminine guys that speak like this, yeah. and that is the most atrocious kind of voice. Uh, even <laughs> when women speak with nasally voices, it's quite a turn off. Uh, then you have like a throat voice, which is like something in the middle, which you know you're you're pushing the air out through kind of your your throat, and it's um it, you know it's not too bad, but it's it's not exactly a resonant voice, and that's the voice mm. that you want to work towards. I mean, you also have a pretty resonant voice. Um, when you when you when you develop a voice like that, uh, what you say doesn't even matter. I mean, I'm exaggerating, obviously. Other factors come into play, of course. Um, but I can like as a generalization, it almost doesn't matter. I've had girls sometimes just tune out of like what like the content of what I'm saying, uh. just so they could like hear the vibration of the voice. <laughs> you could be literally talking about the fucking weather or how you love the color green. Uh -huh. Okay, especially if you sensualize it and sexualize it. But that's like that's a, that's a different point altogether. Um, so one thing is the, t the tonality of it and the resonance and there's vocal exercises that I do with clients and I, you know, I'm not a vocal coach. So I always say, get a vocal coach. If you need to find programs, read books, like it's the way you say it. Do you have any videos or content on that? Cause I feel like that could be a very interesting video. Um, not, not on my YouTube channel. I was going to make something around the topic, but I, I sent some videos to my uh, clients before they take a boot camp, uh, mm -hmm. and in some of my uh, digital courses, I have some stuff. Um, but I always say, I was going to say, oh yeah, vocal, yeah. So vocal tonality, and then, and then, and then pacing, and then the way you speak, like the mm -hmm. engagement of it, like pauses, emphasis on certain words, um, you know influxes in your tonality uh -huh. so that you can create a more dynamic engaging 
um, experience for, for people. And that's what makes, if you ever watch good speakers or, you know, in certain films, good delivery. Uh, and it's not just about the voice. It's also about the facial expressions, you know, uh, and the eye contact. But, but the voice is just so key. So when I, when I see guys that don't have their voice down, I say, just drop everything and focus on your fucking voice. Mm, like, interesting. Because if, if your voice is shit, and sometimes you have guys that have like a bad accent on top of that and like poor command of the English language, I'm like, bro, like you're not even going to register, okay? She is just going to immediately disacknowledge you as a human being. Hello, right? you seem very cute. Can I talk to you for two minutes, please? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, and then they're, they're, they're asking about some kind of techniques or some kind of like other shit. I'm like, no, voice, focus, one thing at a time. Interesting. Um, what, do you, what do you think about, uh, like, for example, I can tell you with me firsthand, like a lot of guys have commented on this, how my voice has changed in the last like two years since when I started filming and I actually went back and looked at some of my old videos and it has changed. And there's two things that changed my voice. One was TRT, testosterone, like that definitely changes your voice. The other one is just getting more confident making videos. Like when I was making videos, you know, two years ago, I was like a little nervous and shit. I was like, oh, uh, versus now I just don't really give a shit. Um, what, do, what do you think about that? Like guys, like if their voice really sucks, just getting on TRT just to improve their voice. Uh, TRT, uh, what is it like testosterone supplements? Testosterone replacement therapy, yeah. Replacement therapy. Uh, I'm not. I'm no expert uh, in in that on that topic, so I I can't comment on it. I have heard that it could be uh, helpful to have more uh, testosterone, and I think working out probably helps with that as well because it builds no. testosterone. Uh -huh. um, but I would say. Yeah, and sure, explore that. But I would say um, vocal exercises, vocal exercises, like all the guys I've worked with, that's usually what I've emphasized. And mm -hmm. I'm sure maybe there's some other stuff like TRT that can help too. So by all means, explore it. But I've usually done vocal exercises and um, and that, that just helps dramatically. I've seen some like major transformations even over the course of like a four day boot camp. But like guys that have worked with me, for example, or have assisted me in an overtime have worked on their voice, you know, it's crazy. Another part, of course, of this is that their internals have to change, like their internal belief systems. And, um, you know, like, like your confidence, your belief systems, all that affects your voice, too. If you're more yeah, of course. Uh -huh. anxious in your head, you're yeah. going to have uh, more uptalk and your voice might get higher. So... Yeah. There's, um, and that, you know, that speaks to you, for example, becoming more comfortable on camera. Once you got more comfortable, you know, your voice became more comfortable, more resonant, no, probably. For sure. Uh, so, well, uh, so yeah, I, I would consider all of that. And uh, I, I personally would want to maybe look into this whole testosterone thing. That's interesting to, like, to what extent it helps. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Um, all right, man. What? Have you taken uh, any any supplements or? or oh yeah, yeah. I, I've been on TRT for uh, two years now. Okay, it's, it's a shot. You you do it yourself uh, twice a week. Yeah, I've been doing that for two uh, for two years. Okay, I'm gonna make a note. Look into this. Shit. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, TRT and actually recently I got into uh, HGH. I know, but it wasn't like most people get into human growth hormone for uh, bodybuilding purposes. I just got into it because I had like an injury and I was trying to heal it faster. Is this natural stuff? I'm not big. No, no, any. no, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. not. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. not at all. Um, all right, yeah. Let's, let's jump into some because we got so many questions building up. So let's. Uh, we're actually going to start off with a very easy question. I think you're going to enjoy. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. I. I don't know by whose uh, standards, um, but. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't let shit like this get to my head. It's certainly nice be, being considered an authority uh, by some. And, I, and, there, and there's a follow-up to this question. <laughs> <laughs> that's more content that's coming. It's coming. I'm, uh, I'm going to be building up a, a whole queue of content for the next few months. It's just been on a hiatus dealing with stuff, trying to personal, personal stuff and business stuff. But uh, don't worry, I've not given up. Uh, my goal is to be more consistent um, in the coming months, and there's a lot of topics I wanna I want to cover. 
So. Yeah, we, we we lost Kobe this year. We can't uh, we can't lose uh, Vadim. No, no, I'm 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 here to stay. I'm here to stay. <laughs> Good I'm stuff. on a mission, guys. Help you out. All right. So this question: Have you ever met a girl off an app, but when meeting for the date, you didn't bang her for some reason? Either she ended up not being into you, or she wasn't attracted to her in person. Of course, it's happened to me multiple and multiple Absolutely. times. It's just, happened to every guy. Yeah, but when meeting for the day, you didn't bang her for saying either she ended up not being into you or wasn't attracted to you in person. So specifically because she was not into me or wasn't attracted to me in person, specifically because you knew that was the reason? No, it was just or, more like where you had a date where sex did not happen. And oh, yeah. Every yeah. guy's had that multiple times. Yeah, like, absolutely. Uh, no, no one's batting 100 out of 100. No, and sometimes that's because she wasn't into you or no. wasn't attracted to you. I had a fucking situation. Well, this wasn't off an app, uh, but I had a situation uh, a few weeks ago. I met this, uh, I met this girl, who French girl, who we had like pretty decent chemistry, and uh, you know I thought, and we fucked like a few times, and it was like sensational sex. Um, and then afterwards, I followed up with her, you know, to see her again. And she was like, she was being kind of flaky. And I usually level with the girls, by the way, when they're being flaky or distant, just to like get quickly to the bottom of things. I'm like, hey, yeah. what's up? I thought we vibed well. And she was like, oh, uh, I don't, uh, I, I didn't feel like we had like a very special connection. Mm. And, you know, looking back, I'm like, we didn't have a lot in common, to be honest. We kind of had like a bit of a, we had like a, a good sexual chemistry. Um, she was also seeing another guy and was getting more serious so but anyway you'll have all kinds of weird scenarios you'll have a girl sometimes i had a girl go on a date and we were vibing and flirting she even came back to my place and i was like she wouldn't make out because of covid because she was seeing her parents and her mom had cancer and i'm like okay that's legit but she was like letting me stroke her thighs and her, <laughs> and her neck Dude, the way some of these chicks think COVID works is hilarious. Like, yeah. like, yeah, like you, you can fuck me, but it's it's like the pure nonsense. Like a lot of these just have no understanding of how germ theory works. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's hilarious. Um, but anyway, like we we're back at my place. She was there. She didn't have to be there. She looked comfortable. I'm stroking her thighs and like, you know, getting pretty sexual without kissing. But then afterwards, you know, she was like. Oh, like, I don't think, like, we had good chemistry. So you'll have, like, a whole spectrum of shit like this for yeah. happen when girls won't bang for a variety of reasons. For sure. I mean, literally recently, like, three weeks ago, I had a chick straight to the house from Hinge. And yeah. literally, you know, just my normal game, you know, take her on my romantic balcony, slowly start escalating, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we make out. And the kiss was pretty bad. Like, it, it wasn't like she was a bad kisser. It was just like, there really was no chemistry. But, you know, whatever. I've had those situations. And most of the time, you still smash on my couch, put her on my lap, start escalating. She's like, Alex, there's something I gotta tell you. Uh, and I'm like, oh, like, what, does she have a dick or something? Like, she made it sound like it was something so grave, or like, she's like, has HIV? Like, I don't fucking know. I'm like, yeah, what's up? She's like, I just didn't feel any chemistry when we kissed. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, actually taken off guard, because at this point in the game, I've gotten like, every single objection, but that one, like, I didn't even, I was like, I was like, it wasn't that bad. She's like, it wasn't the worst ever, but there's just, I need that chemistry. I just don't think we have any chemistry. And I was, I was like, trying, I was like, all right, I'm like, that's all right, we can bang through it. And she's like, ah, I just, I, I, can't, I can't. And literally, she left. Like, there was, it was like a weird situation. So, like, yeah. So, to answer the person's question, every single guy has situations where dates don't work out. And that's normal. If, anyone who says they're fucking like every girl they meet is 100% lying to you. That's bullshit. Absolutely. The, the, the important thing is to, over time, learn what is within your control and what is without it, yes. outside of your control. Yes. Because the things that are outside of your control, I mean, nothing you can do about it, and you're not going to get every girl, no matter how good you are. 100%, yeah. Increasing your success ratio over time. Vadim, you come off pretty playful in vids. How do you avoid falling into the dancing monkey category? That's a good question. Okay, so, oof. well, it comes down to calibration, right? Uh, well, one thing is to develop a more playful and lighthearted mindset about life, okay? And I'm naturally a bit of a goofball. I always have been. Um, I just learned to manage it better over time 
to leverage it in the right way at the right times. Because, because so you don't you don't want to change the things about you that are like core inherent features of you. So if you're you know on some level a bit of a goofball, uh, well you you should stay a goofball. That's you, right? Uh -huh. Or a certain kind of sense of humor resonates with you. You know you should stay. Uh, that should stay with you. But uh -huh. um, that answer this. So keep, keep talking, man. I'm just gonna get a drink real quick. Sure, sure. So. You guys, okay, so part of it is like understanding uh, who you are uniquely as a person, okay? Two is developing what I call, cultivating what I call a lighthearted attitude or comedic outlook on life. This is very key. Um, to not take yourself seriously, to not create an identity around shit. Um, you know, we, we can get super philosophical about all this. You know, we don't have time for that. But like, you know, I don't believe we're on this like <laughs> we're on this planet or in this life for any grander sense of purpose, or at least we don't know what that is. So until then, I kind of treat treat everything with a very comedic outlook. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that could apply to the most horrible situations, right? Like war, famine, um, stock market crashes, right? It's all kind of comedic because it really doesn't mean anything in some philosophical sense, right? So, you know, when you start adopting a very lighthearted attitude towards life, uh, you learn to be, just be more playful and lighthearted. Now, having said that, and this is where calibration comes in, um, and of course, there's also like learning how to be flirtatious, da 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 da. But how do you avoid falling into the dancing monkey category while you? You test stuff, you test stuff, you, let's say you're not very good at being flirtatious, okay, uh -huh. or injecting humor and stuff like that. Well, then you do that stuff, and then maybe you'll overdo it, and then maybe you start recognizing that you're overdoing it, and maybe you tone it back, okay? I always say that there should be, 30% of your interactions with women should be, let's say, flirtatious. Okay, where you're like building sexual tension and being flirting. The rest of it should just be you kind of vibing with the girl. Don't be boring. You can still be engaging when you talk about the weather and about her grandmother being an artist. Okay, you can still talk with emotion, but you don't have to push buttons and be a little like uh, dancing monkey, as you call it. Like, oh, you know, where'd you get that shirt? Thrift shop? Ha ha ha. Right? So, you know, the, this this uh, falls under the whole like teasing category and all that. I think a big, another big thing that causes guys to become dancing monkeys is because of their, their unresolved insecurities and fears. Uh -huh. uh, and this can actually sometimes um, fall into, you know, it's, it's a spectrum. There are guys that are almost histrionic and that's a very extreme form of dancing monkey where they suffer from depression, grave insecurities and depression, and they disguise it or cope with it by being very over the top and very theatrical. Okay, now that's a very extreme sense of it, but I've seen stuff like this. But, you know, milder versions of that are because of unresolved insecurities slash lack of experience. So, you know, your lack of confidence you disguise as you uh you being uh, this entertainer guy or you or you realize that's the thing that works so you do more of it so you got to tone it back sometimes and say well how do i engage people in a different way not just by pushing buttons and being the jokester maybe i can engage by telling an interesting story or working on my voice or being vulnerable so i can connect with them uh -huh. et cetera et cetera so yeah, it's, uh, it's a nuanced topic but hope that gives you some yeah, just kind of my two cents on that is I think a big yeah. part of it is uh, whether you're dancing monkey or you're just a playful guy is why you're why you're cracking the jokes. Are you cracking the jokes just to have fun and make yourself laugh, or are you doing it to to make the girl laugh? Like, what is the uh, source of that? I think that's one thing. And two, whether there's sexual tension or not. So, if you there's a lot of sexual tension, you're not going to be the dancing monkey. You can't you. You can't be the dancing monkey if there's a lot of sexual tension. If there's no sexual tension, then it's pretty easy to be the dancing monkey. Uh, to uh, because you're saying that some guys are going to try to get there 
uh, by pushing her buttons. Yeah, like, you know, like, if, if a girl, if there's, like, this strong underlying sexual tension that, like, you know, even if you are a little bit, like, goofy and shit, like, the girl is, you're, she's not going to think of you as a dancing monkey. Because mm -hmm. there's that foundation there. Yeah, absolutely. If, if it's already there and you, and you inject the most goofiest shit, and I do this all the time, uh, you don't come off as a dancing monkey because there's so much sexual tension. The tone has been set so you can be, like... You're a little goofball, aren't you? And uh, you like to suck dick, don't you? Yeah. You Look like at her. Sucks. She loves. She loves the big dicks. She <laughs> likes the big ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I actually like being goofy and very dirty at the same time. It's a yeah. Me too. Me too. I, I love doing short. Slut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I like to do? Like I have the I have a um, voice that I do for my dog. Like I make my dog sound like goofy. Like well, they will, you know. And I like to like pretend like my dog is saying really dirty shit. Hey Alex, do you think her booty? You know the carpets match the drapes. Her booty's jiggling when she walks. Ooh, ooh. Can you take some pictures and show her to me later? You're gonna go doggy style. Ho, ho, ho. And like you're just an excuse to go like super fucking sexual and dirty. And I'm like, and she's she's like, whoa. I'm like, what's the dog? Like, don't blame me. He said it, not me. It's, yeah, it's it's the dog. <laughs> the other week I was I was uh, uh, hanging out with my girl. I like to just do this goofy shit sometimes. You know, we'd be standing like by the couch and like I grab her and you know I kind of just like push her on the couch. I uh, push her on the couch and start just getting all sexual. I'm like, oh, whoa, like, I slipped. Your, your floors are so slippery. Oh, whoa, we're already, I'm already kissing your neck. What's, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is all just happening out of my control. Um, but, yeah, so you can incorporate that stuff once she doesn't see you as a goofball. Yeah. One, one thing I like to do, one of the uh, girls I'm seeing has, like, huge tits. So what I like to do is, like, if we're, like, out or something, there's another girl who has big tits. I'm like, I'm like, yo, you should, you should strike up a friendship with her. She's like, why? Like, why, why do you say that? I'm like, well, you can invite her to the big titty club. You know, like, that's like, I always just use her big tits for everything. Uh, like, she's like, I don't know, it's a little cold to go to the beach. I'm like, yeah, your, your big titties will keep us warm. Like, you know, like, just like, there's so much you can, just so much material. Yeah, little inside jokes, absolutely, yeah. If she's watching this, she's, she's going to be displeased. All right, so, um, um, Vadim the Impaler, have you always been extroverted and charismatic? I like how all the questions they're directed towards you start with the compliments. <laughs> You're getting a lot of validation on this channel, yeah, bro. I used, I used to be, but after college, my personality kind of changed. How can I practice being more extroverted again? I've always been extroverted and charismatic. I used to be, but after college, my personality kind of changed. How can I practice being more extroverted again? Uh, okay. No, I have not been extroverted. Um, I was not an introvert either. I was always somewhere in the middle. I was what I would call... Fuck, I don't know what to call myself. But I was this kind of like awkward, somewhere in the middle, goofy guy who's kind of, who's kind of social. Like, I like being social. But I, I also was over-analytical, you know, and I didn't know how to be properly social. Um... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It was it was some, some weird mix, like poor emotional intelligence too. <laughs> it's a bit of a mess. So no. Um, and your question is, I used to be. So yeah, I pushed myself to be more extroverted and like put myself out there and learn how to be more charismatic. I used to be. Da -da 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 -da. How can I practice being more extroverted again? Well, fuck. There's a bunch of stuff you can do. Um, you know, read books, for example. Uh, well, one comes to mind, the charisma myth, how to be more charismatic. Uh, two, you can, you know, w well, when you're out, practice saying shit that makes you more interesting, more entertaining, more engaging. You can also watch films with uh, good male leads that are engaging, interesting. You could watch good speakers, you know. You, you know, you watch a movie like Jerry Maguire, for example. So you had a question? No, you're saying good speakers, so I raised my hand. Oh, yes, yes. Good speakers like Alex. Um, you know, you watch a movie like um, Jerry Maguire, for example, and, you know, you, you think to yourself, well, why? What makes him so charismatic and likable? You know, mm. Tom Cruise's character in that movie. Like, he's got this, he's got this, like, energy where you're like, oh, it's just, it's, it's just so good. You know, and Tom Cruise is naturally like that. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. but if you start to pick apart those elements, you know you can replicate that and then make them a part of who you are. 
Yeah. I mean, Alex, I'm sure you know you know this as well as I do because we've been making videos. Practice, like practice making fucking videos or talking. Practice whatever it is, and you get better at it. The more, the more you practice something, the better you get. Like I mean, for sure. Like when I, if you look at the videos, I, I, I get cr like I almost want to take my early videos down because I honestly find them so cringe. But I didn't because I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. Guys find value in them. But like, you know, I feel like my delivery and the way I present myself has gone like a hundred times better. And I'm sure if there was infield of me doing cold approach when I was 22, I would find that shit extremely cringe too, right? And for example, I did stand up comedy for the first time in my life. Uh, oh yeah, two weeks ago, and like. Nice. I'm pretty good at like pretty much every social situation, but I fucking bombed. And but that's okay. I expected it because it was my first time doing it, right? And as I keep doing it, I'm gonna get better and better. So like you know, like, it's just it's just practice, practice, practice. Like whatever you want to get better at, you have to practice it. Put yourself in a lot of social situations. Like I try to like just outside yeah. outside from just chicks. I like to like get together with a bunch of my friends, like mate, girls, guys, and just all just laugh and have fun and do shit like that. Like I didn't really start doing that until like much later in life. Like I was like up until the age of like 27, I was just like it was just like I would either hang out with like one or two of my friends or I would like hang out with a chick but I never did these big get togethers and like as I started doing more and more of that like that also makes you more charismatic because it's a different dynamic it's like 10 20 different people and you're like so just practice putting yourself in a bunch of these you know situations yeah uh, those are really fun or, you know going to some kind of functions events art function I don't know healthy living function uh well, I don't know, fitness exhibit, whatever, where you can like interact and meet people, network, especially if it's in alignment with your business. PWF yeah. Summit, yeah, shit like that. There you go. <laughs> Is there a summit? It, it, we're going to do one. We, it would have happened already if it wasn't for COVID. But yeah, I do want to do one uh, probably around next summer. Uh, okay. Yeah, dude, for sure. I'll send you all the details once. I'd love to have you as a speaker. All right, all right. It's going to be a good time. Right. What do you do on a day when you first see the girl? If you meet at a bar, how do you make sure things are not platonic and bring her back to your place? What do you do on a day when you when you first see the girl? Like like immediately? Yeah, yeah I think that's what he's getting at. How do you make sure things are not platonic? Or like in the initial stages, I guess maybe he means and bring her back to your place. Well, those are two questions. Well, one is uh, I think I think what Mr. White is trying to say is trying to ask is how do you set the right tone so that things are not platonic? Uh, and look, fuck, this is it's a very nuanced point. But well, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to fall into some kind of a um, and it's very easy to do sometimes. You don't want to fall into a what I call a transactional. Um, dynamic and a transactional dynamic or, or a business like dynamic okay or, or platonic if you want to call it that but that's a dynamic where it's almost like this exchange of information and uh. sometimes it's easy to get sucked into that because that's the tone that the girl sets uh. not because she's not into you right off the bat but because she's nervous herself <clears throat> she's nervous she doesn't know necessarily what is the best way to navigate a date you know she's just gonna like ask questions and say stuff she might not know how to inject emotion and passion and uh, sensuality into the date. And it might be your job to bring that out of her, to set that vibe. So I would say, well, you got to start setting that vibe by practicing, you know, elements of, uh, of flirting and seduction and, uh, you know, being more engaging, spontaneous. I mean, it's a lot of shit we can talk about, about how to be that guy. But another thing is just not to get sucked into that transactional vibe that doesn't mean that you can't ask questions like where do you work that's not what i'm saying but if it's too much of this like uh emotionless in exchange of information then it's going to become platonic uh -huh. and then bringing her back to your place well you know you gauge how things are going what i like to do on dates is i like to um i like to have a change of scenery okay first uh -huh. of all i never do dinner because that I'm a horrible multitasker and I hate to eat and get to know someone for the first time. hundred percent, hundred percent agreed. So for me, that's a big no, no. So, um, what I like to do is let's say, if you want to keep it simple and have a drink, you go to one bar, you have one drink, then you go to, you say, Hey, let's go to another bar, uh -huh. Ad adventure, change of scenery. Yep. And maybe, maybe you like two, three locations tops in the process you're walking around. You know, you're, there's maybe some physicality, blah, 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 which, by the way, helps with not being platonic. 
It also helps if you're sitting beside her in a way where let's say you and her are next to one another at the bar. Well, there's more intimacy and closeness as opposed to across from one another. Uh -huh. okay, so that helps. But basically over time, if things go well, uh, and if you're feeling a certain vibe, well, you could, um, I would go for a makeout first to test the waters. And then I would say, I used to pull girls back for hookah back in the day. I stopped uh -huh. smoking it, but that was my big go-to thing before. Now I would just say, well, let's go back to my place, have a drink. I don't know. Um, I don't get that creative. I'll show you my Airbnb art. I'll show uh, you my exposed brick. I'll show you my fascinating view from my first floor. I'll show you my exposed brick along with my exposed dick. That's right. That's right. A little, a little witticisms. I mean, yeah. I would I would say just when you greet the girl, I would just you know don't don't shake her hand. Like every when I have a date, I give the girl a hug, like and then I kiss her on the cheek, like right away. That's what I do, and that that like sets the tone, right? Like you know, so don't shake her hand or some shit like that. Hug, kiss on oh, the cheek. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I'll, I'll, I'll typically I'll touch her like I'll be like oh this is a cute shirt I almost wore the same one tonight like right away just getting physical in like a non too aggressive way that sets the frame from the start. True, true. Something exactly. Uh, it's a very good point. The hug, any kind of physicality upon upon the yeah. You know. Never never sit across from the girl. What I always do is like I always take a chair and pull it up next to her. So I'll always like don't do like these across like. And like, you know, if, if the girl tries to, I'll be like, what is this a job interview? Come over here. Come and get over here. Like, let's a little closer. Come to daddy. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Uh, um, oh, I will say this though. Don't try to force the pull or getting her back to your place on the first night. This is actually very important. I have experimented a lot with this in the past and, you know, because I just wanted to get to know the process, learn the work with those. But I would say. If you really like a girl, okay, and you see her as like potential for something, you know, more serious, um, don't don't rush the pull on the first date. I would say wait wait for the second date. Uh, they're going to be like a hundred times more comfortable, just because it's the second date, and it just shows that you're not in a rush to fuck. You know, it might you know that you're not maybe a player, which some girls. Um, you know, if they are looking for something more serious, or girls in general, sometimes they might be afraid of that. It might it might leave a bad taste in her mouth. Like sometimes I've had situations, literally from the moment I meet the girl, to the moment you know, to the moment like we're we're, we're on my bed and I'm trying to escalate. It's been like two hours. And let's say I met her during the day, right, uh, on the street. So what goes through a girl's mind? Okay. Within two hours of knowing this guy, he's already trying to fuck me. He's probably doing this to a lot of girls. I don't think he's interested in anything serious. There's pressure. There's expectations. So you could sabotage situations. So I would say, like, like gauge it, play it by ear, and don't don't necessarily rush things. Uh -huh. Or if you pull her back, you know, keep it very light. Um, go for the makeout. See how comfortable she is. Don't start like escalating aggressively and dealing with LMR. Mm. Yeah, that's probably one area where we disagree. I'm a big proponent of trying to smash the first night. And that's not even so much that because I need to get laid the first night. Like That's actually the, probably the smallest aspect of it. It's just I found that if I can bang the chick, like my chance, even if I really like the girl, my chance of seeing her again are so much higher than versus if it's just a date where we just like make out or something like that. So I'm doing it for her. But um, yeah, I've just kind of noticed that pattern across the board. As long as, yes, like when you said, like, she doesn't feel like she was pressured into the sex, but that, that shouldn't be happening anyway. Shouldn't be like fucking blackmailing girls into fucking unless they're into that sort of thing, which some right. chicks are. Right. So that's where, you know, it's a good point. That's where calibration comes in. You know, obviously if it's like, if it's flowing, you gauge things. If it's flowing and it's going in that direction then you can make it happen. Yeah. Make it happen. Right. But you know, sometimes, you know, you'll have a situation. For example, I remember going a few months ago, I was come, uh, coming back from a first date with this girl. And I was like not sure in my mind how serious I am about seeing her. She seemed like she could be quality, but I'm like, you know what? I feel like maybe trying to get late tonight. So I, you know, I suggested having a drink back at my place. But she was kind of like being like uh, iffy about it, and you know, not really speaking speaking to you know to, to how comfortable she was. And I sensed that, so I'm like, okay, let me guess. You you know you don't. You know, you won't go back to a guy's place on like the first night or, you know, oh, is this too, too fast? And she's like, oh, yeah, da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, cool. Okay. At, at that point. 
But then you have like gray areas where a girl's like kind of like that. But then I'm like, well, let's grab some food and then we have to eat it back in my place because it's COVID. We're not going to eat outside. And then she's like, yeah, okay, but sex is not going to happen. I'm like, yeah, no pressure. We'll just eat at my place. And then when you're there and things are flowing, it could just happen, right? So you gotta you gotta gauge the situation, right? The vast majority of the time when a girl says herself sex is not going to happen, sex is going to happen. She wants sex to happen. Like, I, I learned that lesson. Like, I've had this so many times where I'm pulling a girl back. She's like, just so you know, I'm not going to have sex with you, Alex. I'm like, of course not. I hate sex. I wouldn't even have sex with you. Within 10 minutes of walking in, we're banging. She's like, oh, daddy, I want that dick. Like, oh, all right, let's be real. That's not really happening either. But, you know, we're having some missionary-style intercourse. The biggest, uh, reason, the biggest reason girls will... Uh, will we'll say that sex is not happening um, is because they don't want to be potentially put in the situation where you uh, expect it mm -hmm. and you think that she uh, that there was an has unwritten to. agreement yeah, yeah, yeah. That there was an unwritten agreement that by going to your place she has to like 100% and girls are so non-confrontational that they hate being put in that position yes that's why they'll in premature uh, that's why they'll uh, ahead of time be like hey Heads up, it's not going to happen. Plus, they don't want to potentially be perceived as a slut and all that. So, yeah, they, 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 a lot of it is girls hate expectations. Like they hate like where you have. If, if you that's that's like the big thing. Like you can sexualize a lot over text, which is something I do quite often. But what I don't do is I don't make an expectation. Like okay, so you're going to come over, we're going to start having sex. I'll never say something like that. I'll just it, it's implied, but there's never that expectation, right? Like and as as, as that's soon good. as the as yeah. soon as there is an expectation, the flake rate just goes through the roof. Um, yeah, like 100%. Like, I'll never say shit like, you know, let's go back to my place and fuck, right? Like, you'll never hear me say that. Um, let's go back to my place and have a glass of wine on my romantic balcony, which i.e. means let's fuck within like five minutes of getting to my place. <laughs> yeah, you got to be subtle with this stuff. Let me just grab a bottle of water. Yeah, go for it. I'll actually tell a quick story. So I think it's also good to be able to have like this strategic uh, bird's eye view of the situation. Like for example, I remember about two months ago, I had a date with a girl, right? Uh, during the date, I'm doing all the talking. She's like super quiet, really hot girl, but she's just like very shy, not talking much, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, like by all accounts, like if you look at it, you know, just at the moment. Oh yeah, I was, telling, I was telling the story, but you jumped at the right time. So if you look at the situation, like I was having a date with a chick, uh, she wasn't talking much, it was me doing all the talking. So if you're looking at this scene, you would think that she's not into me, right? That, that's just kind of how it would look. But Wait, I'm like, oh. Sorry, I spaced for a second. She was doing all the talking or you doing No, I was doing all the talking. She was just kind of there like, yeah, 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 public date, right? But I'm like, all right, well, you know, like, I've had many situations where that was the case, but me and the girl still wound up smashing and whatever. So I'm like, okay, still pull her back to my place. Uh, go back to my place. And then she's like, what I like to do is I never say like, let's go back to my place. I say, let's go for a walk. And I just lead them to my place. And uh, so the chick is like, um, she's like, I don't know, Alex, like I have work early tomorrow. Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if we have time, you know, to have a drink at your place. And I'm like 15 minutes. Just 15 minute drink. She's like, yeah, just 15 minutes. I'm like, just 15 minutes. Go to my place. Again, she doesn't seem like she's into me at all. We're just talking, blah, 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 blah. But like, again, I, I have this bird's eye view of the situation. And I know that, of course, there's a chance that she's not into me. But it's also probably that maybe she's shy and she just also probably likes a really dominant guy. So that's what we'll kind of learn about her later on. So as soon as I start escalating, just like completely game changer she becomes super into it and she's like super into it but like everything up until escalation it just seemed like she was not interested right so like so it's good to have this like strategic understanding of game and female psychology to be able to calibrate because if i for example if this was five years ago i would have just given up i would have just assumed this girl is not into me yeah um that's a very good point uh, a lot of girls are believe it or not also nervous and experienced, reserved, insecure. So they don't, you know, afraid of being judged, all that shit. Um, you know, introverted. Fuck, like some girls are introverted as fuck and they don't express their emotions and you don't know what's on their mind. And so, yeah, like like you said, Alex, you, you need to have, you know, a good bird's eye view or overall understanding of like, you know, social dynamics and female psychology so that you become uh, more intuitive about these things you know hmm. and, can, and can make stuff happen 
<clears throat> guys think that you know they're they're the only ones that are like nervous and and don't know what to do. Fuck, like girls, a lot of girls just don't know what the fuck's going on either. So true. Yeah, I yeah. would say overall they're more emotionally intelligent than men. They hundred percent. Yeah. Um, but hey, they all have their own you know issues and and uh, shortcomings. Definitely. Uh, but let's, let's go for another, like 15, 20 minutes. Just take some questions because we're sure. already gone for a while. Uh, what is something you would highly suggest man learning cold approach to start doing for better results? Good question. What is something you would highly suggest a man? So a man who is learning cold approach already to start doing? Yeah, a guy who's just getting into cold approach. What are some things you would recommend for him to like speed up the learning process? Fuck, that's a broad question. <laughs> Well, it depends, first of all, on where you're at, actually. I, I would say start with that because this is not, there's not some one template fits all. If let's, you're, assume, let's assume beginner. Um, well, not only, <clears throat> I don't mean necessarily in that sense. I mean, is there something potentially more important that we need to fix first? And that's, mm, okay. so if you're uh, really overweight, <laughs> I would say, well, I would say make, make diet a big, uh, uh, your priority, okay? Um, if your style is really bad, I would say make that your priority. Otherwise, you will uh, sabotage all your approaches. I always, I always make sure that my clients give me pictures of multiple outfits to gauge whether or not they need some help in their fashion sense. Uh. I will not let them take the boot camp unless we've addressed that. Otherwise, uh. like I've had some some guys with like um, with some really poor styles, and I'm like. I can just imagine how that's gonna fly. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, assuming assuming you've like addressed some like important things, like you know that'll make a first impression, um, like, like style, like shaving your head clean if you're balding, like me. See, this is not good. You know, I would tell I would tell someone fucking shave this before you start approaching. Um, but assuming all else is equal, then, well, one is making a habit of going out and and um, and trying shit out and trying different things out. You know, well, look, on the one hand, I say trying different things, meaning like like experimenting with stuff, like focusing on maybe something for, for some time, but then experimenting, okay? Uh. But... Um, Initially, maybe start by just getting like the initial, the initial mechanics down. Like for example, when I work with my clients, you know, I, I make sure that they get their initial delivery in, and that they know how to position themselves correctly. And this is, for example, during the day. At night, there might be a different uh, set of things. Um, but during the day, I'll say, okay, make sure you know how to open her appropriately. Make sure your vocal tonality is loud enough. Make sure you position yourself the right way. Make sure that your initial opening sequence is down so that you're not stressing about that. So that you're mm -hmm. not like, well, what do I say? Like, because that first initial part is so crucial that many guys just, it just never gets anywhere because of that, because that's fucked up. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if that's, if that confused, confused the, the viewers more than it's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I would say uh, track your results, like track, like try to be scientific about it. like, okay, I've gone out, you know, for, you know, uh, four nights, like what were my results like? How many, how many numbers did I get? Well, and try to find, try to find your, um, what's it called? The, uh, what's the expression? The bottleneck, the bottleneck in your game. Is my bottleneck, for example, texting, right? Like maybe I'm getting all these numbers, but you know, I'm just fucking up over text, which is very common. Maybe my bottleneck is closing. Maybe I'm having a lot of really good interactions with girls, but I'm just bailing at the end of the set or I'm not properly closing them. Maybe my bottleneck is dates. Maybe I'm setting up all these dates, but I can't close any of them. Maybe my bottleneck is retention. I'm fucking all these girls, but then I get really weird after sex. So I think they're just trying to figure out your bottlenecks and constantly like eliminating them. And then once you eliminate one bottleneck, your game improves and then until you get to the next bottleneck. Then you prove that then you remove that bottleneck. And it's just like a series of like constantly removing very various bottlenecks yeah that's a good point so that that um um that speaks to the concept of deliberate practice as i like to call it versus regular practice meaning you're always deli um you're deliberately analyzing what the fuck you're doing so you're not blindly just like banging your head against the wall so tracking 
you know, or just being on top of like, you know, testing what's working, what's not, is a very important attitude to have uh, in this when you're starting out and over the course of the journey as well. Yeah, I mean, hundred um, percent. How do you know when you're being too gamey? Joe Schmo. This question comes a lot because I constantly, constantly tell guys that they're too gamey because I think that's like the most common issue I see in the pickup community. Guys who are too gamey, both in terms of texting and the way they talk to girls in real life. Like I just see this time and time again. Guys are doing like these overly fancy witticisms and verbals. They're just not congruent. And the girl's like, okay, yeah. Versus they would have been way better off if they're like, hey, uh, you know, what do you do for work? Like, oh, cool, yeah, I work. Like they would like something as simple and boring as that. They would have been better off than like. On this fine evening, as I stumbled upon the pleasure of your company and your fine-smelling vagina, like, I don't know, just like, I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, you see, this is a, dub, uh, this is a bit of a double-edged sword, because on the one hand, some guys sometimes have to learn a lot of this stuff to get good at it, right? They learn how to, you know, how to trigger emotions and how to be maybe more seductive and more sexual and more flirtatious. And, but in the process, they, they come off too gaming. And hey, guess what? I've been there myself, okay? To circus monkey, to, or dancing monkey, to gaming, blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. I think on some level, it's an inevitable part of the journey and evolution for a lot of guys, okay? Not everyone. Some guys already maybe have a lot of shit down them, but they won't go through that. But for a lot of guys, I think it's an inevitable part of the journey. And I think, you know, you know, Alex and I, we can laugh about that, you know, and it is funny, and I think it's, it's good to laugh at that. Um, and I see it all the time, and I cringe at it, and I laugh at it. But I think it's, uh, in some sense, inevitable, and I think guys shouldn't, um, they, they shouldn't necessarily stress about that, but they should also be cognizant of it. They should understand that it is, it is happening, okay? It is happening because maybe you know, you're learning to be more flirtatious, and so you're doing too much of it. And uh -huh. that's where, like, the tracking and the analyzing is so important. Hey, how did that interaction go? Or how did that date go? Was I, you know, was I being too, too much, too extra, uh -huh. too over the top, too sexual, sensual, you know, or not enough, right? Um, so when you start asking yourself those questions and tracking, you will understand why you know, when you're being too gaming. Uh -huh. But also, yeah, don't be, don't be hard on yourself if, if it is happening. It's, it's part of the process, I think. Yeah, sometimes you have to go to one extreme to meet in the middle. I mean, for sure, I was definitely overly gamey at one point in my game. Um, yeah, so hap happens to the best of us. All and right. that's where it helps having a coach or a guide. Very or true. Very true. We teach you or film you the way we do. We film our students and their interactions. We break them down. So you can really see what the fuck is going on. And it's so revelatory. It's like it's absolutely invaluable to see yourself on camera and the way you come off mm -hmm. and then have a coach explain it. Oh, shameless plug. No, I mean, I, I think that is huge. Like seeing yourself on camera can be very like you, you real all this shit that you never knew you did. You do. You're like, holy shit. I, like I walk like this. Do you know? Um, it's crazy. Do you know Brian from uh, the fearless fearless man or whatever? He's like short, 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 bold guy, but that's like a huge part of his teaching is like he'll just video he channel. Yeah, he has a channel. Uh, he's actually going to, I'm trying to get him on a podcast. He'll probably be on in a few weeks. But anyway, so, uh, you know, the way, because I've seen one of some of his workshops, he'll literally, he'll bring in a, you know, uh, a girl for guys to practice and he'll videotape every single way. Like he's like, okay, come up to her and say hi. He'll videotape and he'll micro analyze like all these little things. So I think that's like, you know, a very powerful teaching tool. Yeah, it's no, it's key. It's key. All right. Uh, wait, why is this thing? Is that another question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think just kicked it off. There's a reason. Okay, Alex Vadim, do you ever get tired of just doing booty calls every week? Does a lack of deep emotional connection and just constant sex ever get tired at all? Thanks, guys. Well, uh, this question assumes that. I don't have any kind of deep emotional connection with girls. I can't speak for Vadim, but I'm pretty sure I know what the answer is. It's that like I actually do have a you know deep emotional connection with uh you know with girls. Like um, you know there's there's two girls you know I'm seeing right now who like you know I have an con emotional connection with who I enjoy doing things other than sex with. Uh, I mean I still enjoy the sex, but <laughs> there's like shit. So yeah, so I would say like 
most of the guys, most of the coaches that you guys see probably do have that, like, you know, have an emotional connection with, you know, at least at some point with some girls. Um, can I jump in or you want to add something? Yeah, no, no, go ahead. Oh, um, look, yeah, I think this is, this is an assumption that's made sometimes by, um, by guys that watch, that watch my stuff, you know, your stuff, people in this niche is that um, it's all about some kind of emotionless uh, booty calls and, you know, just quick and dirty sex. Uh, no, that couldn't be further from the truth. Look, I always tell guys I'm here to, 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 to teach you the mindsets and the tools of becoming uh, more successful with women. If you want, by the way, I always say if you want, if that's what you actually want, um, but ultimately, you know, so that you can have the freedom and the choice to do what you want and to explore all this, you know, if you want to have some booty calls, you can have some booty calls. If you want to have, um, you know, some one night stance, sure. If you want to see a woman in a serious committed relationship, well, that's fine too, but you need to have those tools and, and mindsets to get there. Uh, and I think ultimately, unless you're some kind of a sociopath, people <laughs> want People want deep emotional connection. That's like the most satisfying thing about this. Uh, now, I like the idea, me personally, uh, of combining a deep emotional connection with variety. So for me, uh -huh. it's important that my partner, Same. that my partner is into threesomes, for example, that she's bi or bi curious, and that we could share that together. So then you have this one girl who you're like. We've got this very deep connection with, um, but then you're also like uh, get, getting a variety of other women because I personally love sex. I love uh, you know variety with women, um, so that's to me the sweet spot. Maybe not maybe not for for another guy. Maybe the next guy just wants one girl, you know, or maybe he's into some polyamorous shit. I don't know. Uh, but at some point, yeah, booty calls get uh, just booty calls get tiring at some point. Of course, there's there's no substance to it or depth. I should say there's no depth to them. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that like it's easy to like watch our content thing that like. But I'm like I'm not gonna make a video how me and my my you know my girl cuddled for two hours and talked about the meaning of life. Like well, like well, I'm not gonna make content on that. So like right. you know it won't I'm not sell as well. It won't sell as well. Yeah. So <laughs> so you know like. Yeah, I would say that. I mean, definitely, like, what I put out is definitely a huge part of my life. But I would say, like, you know, most dating coaches are more multidimensional than what we see. It's just that the other parts of the life are just not, you know, interesting to other people. Like, I'm not going to talk about, like, for example, like, how I like to, like, nerd out when it comes to dog training and all that shit. And how I'm, like, super into dogs since I got one. Like, like no, no one wants to see a video of me talking about dogs. Like, maybe some guys do. I don't know. Uh, I, think, I think it is important, though, for... For guys like us and i mean i'm trying to um head in that direction it's just it's hard to create all this content is to show the different facets of um of you know these relationships i guess so that it's not just about the pickup or you know getting uh, girls off the dating app or what happens and i mean you've shown some physical escalation and stuff i haven't seen all of your content but like well how do you connect with girls on dates? And what happens when you're in the relationship stage? How do you manage a good relationship? Um, how do you evolve with your partner? All that stuff, because that's that's just as important. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck. And sometimes I fear that some of my viewers might be stuck, you know, at a certain phase where they're just doing some booty calls, thinking that that's that's all there is to it, or passing on a great opportunity to connect with a girl and explore a relationship with her because of some image they've created in their mind, that they have to be some playa playa. Yeah, I, I think my, my whole thing is that you, you should, uh, you know, it, it, it only, the only thing that matters is what you want. Like, like, I hate when, like, people preach that, like, for example, like, like, you know how, like, oh, you just like to have sex. Like, I'm a relationship person. And I'm so much better than you. Like, as if one thing is better. Right. Or like, oh, you're in a relationship. I fucked, like, five girls. Like, it's, there's not one that's better than the other. It just comes down to what you like and what you're into. So my right. whole thing is, like, I want the guys who follow me to have the skill sets to be able to acquire whatever their goals are whether they're the same as mine or totally different like doesn't matter to me like I, what I'm doing is not better than what you're doing it's just like different goals yeah absolutely all right let's take like uh, one or two more questions uh, ch -ch -ch. there's a girl I'm seeing that I like more than the rest I wanted to give her a portrait I drew her for as a gift how can I do this without destroying attraction 
I mean, it's not going to... Okay, so it depends. Like, when you say seeing, that's a very vague word. Do you mean you've gone on one or two dates with or you've been, you know, hooking up and consistently hanging out for, like, six months? All right, so, like, I think the context here is huge. But if it's a girl who you you know you've actually have that kind of you know more of a connection with and you've been consistently hanging out and banging for uh, i don't think it's going to destroy attraction at all it's going to be something interesting um you know she's gonna be like oh wow like be like hey listen like i like to draw and i drew this of you like i want you to have it yeah i yeah i agree with alex uh well i, I don't know maybe jacob could, could say how long he's been seeing the girl we well you know we talked a little bit on tinder we've never met yet but yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if it's if it's if it's very early on, then uh, then I would uh, I would hesitate to do that. It would maybe send send the wrong signal, and maybe what is that saying about you? If like two dates in, you're so infatuated already, that's that's potentially dangerous territory. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you you know if things have been developing, like I like I like to compliment. I like to give give girls gifts. I like to show them how I appreciate them. I think that's uh, that's all very under understated. I think in the community is to is to show the girls the, how you appreciate them. Hundred percent. But it's hard because a lot of guys don't have the other stuff down. So you know it might come from the wrong place, and then they sabotage mm -hmm. the attraction or the interaction. So it's a it's a tough balance to strike. For sure. All right, uh, cold approach question. If a girl has a boyfriend, but you have good chemistry with her, do you make her your wing woman and ask her to set you up with a friend? So I'm curious, what do you think of this? I have like a pretty unique take on this, but. If a girl has a boyfriend, you have good chemistry with her, do you make her your wing woman and ask her to set you up with a friend? Well, uh, first of all, does she want to be your wing woman? Does she have time for this? Um, <laughs> two. Can you uh, imagine a chick explaining this to her boyfriend? Hey, so this random guy approached me on the street, but like I'm not. I told him I had a boyfriend, so I'm just gonna go out with him to the club and help him pick up other girls. Like, what well, boyfriend's gonna be like? Oh, sure, babe. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, listen, if this naturally somehow develops, like if she's your neighbor and you guys naturally just like a vibe sometimes, but she's got a man, but the odd time you happen to like go out with her, and she she's down to wing you. Well, cool. Why not? Um, or if she has a friend that she wants to set you up with, um, sure, why not? You know, uh, sometimes girls will volunteer that information. Like, hey, I actually have this friend who's single. Uh, but context is important, you know. How 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 long have you known her for? Um, will you see her again naturally? Um, so I don't. Yeah. Yes. No. Depends. Maybe. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think this whole, uh, I think there's like a lot of what I call um, PUA fantasies out there. Like a big one is like uh, a guy, like, you know, this is common like five years ago in the RSD forums or whatever. Like, like yeah, you know, I have a date and, uh, you know, the girl wants to bring her friend. The guys are like, dude, threesome, threesome. And I'm like, PUA fantasy, 99.9% .9 of the guys are not going to pull off a threesome. They're just going to get cock blocked. But like, everyone's like, no, dude, limiting belief, threesome. But that's not going to happen. Like, you're much better off telling her, like, hey, I actually want to hang out with you, not you and your friend. Right? Like, there's a lot of PUA fantasies. This is another one. Like, me and a girl has a boyfriend. Wing woman. Have her hook. Again, PUA fantasy. Like, the only kind of chicks who I think make, you know, can be a wing woman are chicks who you've already banged in the past and you have an understanding with about threesomes. Those are actually going to be a wing woman. But random chicks who have a boyfriend, they're not going to realistically be your wing woman maybe for like if you're at a right. club maybe for like 10 minutes but not like long term like again like pure fantasy right like it's a big commitment on her part like and what's in it for her like why right 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 so <laughs> do you do you have any do you have any good pure fantasies that you commonly encounter uh PUA fantasies the threesome one is just like the most the most the most prevalent one. Well, can you elaborate on that? Like, what do you what do you mean by the threesome one? Like, where? So so like okay, so a guy will post like, hey, I have a situation. Uh, you know, I have a, I have a date with a girl, and she texted me. And she said she wants to bring her friend. Right? Yeah. What should I do? And then like all the guys would be like, do it, threesome, threesome. And I'm like, well, that's like a pure fantasy. Like, that's not going to happen 99.999% of the time. In reality, you're just going to go there. It's going to be a little bit awkward, and then the girls are going to bounce out. Like, that's what's going to happen. Like, yeah. limiting belief, bro. Limiting belief. No, like reality. 
Yeah, look, context is super important here. Like, sure, if like things have been very sexual between the two of you and she's yes, insinuating yes. bringing the friend. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah exactly. In that, in that right. sense, a different story. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, if it's like, hey, can I, can I bring a friend uh, to, to have drinks, you know, at the bar, da, 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 because we're going to be coming back from, from some art show together. Um, well, yeah, threesome, don't count on it. Like, anything's possible if you really know what you're doing, uh, but don't count on it. But I would say, yeah, either ask her to, just to, uh, that you want to meet solo, or sometimes just go along with meeting the friend. Like, I, I used to, like, insist on the solo thing, but sometimes what, what happens is if you don't seize an opportunity, like, let's say she's like, tomorrow, we're coming back from this art show, um, and is it cool that my friend is there because she's visiting me from New York? But I really want to see you. Well, I would say, look, this is not ideal. Sure, maybe one on one is better. But if you don't meet her now, maybe you're going to end up having to wait a fucking week to meet her again. In which case, I'd say, fucking go. Meet with the friend, show that you're social, you know, maybe win over the friend too. Um, why not? You know, uh, this, is, this, this is one thing I would probably disagree with you on. My counter argument would be is that your time is an extremely valuable commodity. And even if you're not super busy, you should portray yourself as a guy who has a lot of shit going on. And you don't have time for some optimal situation. That's why I will always say like, when guys sub, will, for a suboptimal situation? Suboptimal situations. Like when guys say, oh, this chick wants to meet halfway. No, like either she's going to meet at a bar near your place or you're going to find another girl who, I, I, if you're super into her, that's a different story. Or you're going to find another girl who's down to meet at a bar near your place. Like your time is the most valuable commodity. Like you don't have time to put yourself in low likelihood situations. That's kind of my counter argument. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree that you shouldn't compromise unnecessarily. You're right. Um, I'm talking about situations where don't be unreasonable and potentially make things harder for yourself. Mm. So if tomorrow she really wants to see you, but it so happens that her friend is there and she can't tell her friend to fuck off, well, meet her halfway because, you know, it's unreasonable to say ditch the friend that's from New York. She's not <laughs> going to clearly. And, or, you know, and then otherwise you might have to, let's say, meet her in a week because you're going to be busy for the next few days. So that's where you just got to be smart about things, right? But if the girl is just being like, you know, like you said, lazy or unreasonable, well, that, you know, that won't fly. Oh, I just want to bring my friend just because. Um, I'd be like, I actually prefer to like to, to meet with you one on one. But like, if you're not comfortable with that, that's cool. Is your friend cool with holding my balls for me while I fuck you? Uh, what? That's important, <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 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 take a last question. Uh, yeah. If a girl comes out comes out to grab a drink with you, would you bother asking about her dating history? Because sometimes the truth that she has a boyfriend comes out, and then she starts to put up her anti cheater defense. Um, I do like to ask girls, but it depends how. Like in, in an interview type of way, no. But I like to do fun. Like I'll, I'll sometimes ask this question. I'll be like, "Have you had any like fucked up, you know, Tinder experiences or something like that?" Like I like hearing stories like that. It's purely because it just makes me curious. Or like sometimes I like to ask like 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 questions like, "Have you ever been in love?" Like I'm I'm like low key trolling her, but like I'm sort of like actually somewhat curious. Like, have you ever been in love besides me? Like I just stare deep into her eyes. So it depends how you're doing it. Uh, that would be kind of my take on that. Uh, sometimes the truth that she has a boyfriend uh, comes out and then she starts to put out her anti-cheater defense. Okay, well that last part is like, I think is a minor point in this. Like, um, I wouldn't concern myself with the possibility that maybe she has a boyfriend and then she would have cheated on him, but now she won't. That's such a minor point. Like, uh, if a girl wants to cheat, like, she'll cheat. And yeah, and if she and if she doesn't, she won't she won't go on the date with you. And I guess where you meet is also important. Anyway, that's a minor point. But as far as asking girls about their dating history, I I like to ask that stuff. I'm I'm genuinely curious. Yeah, me too. Yeah, first yeah. of all, yeah, and uh, and second of all, it's important if things start getting more serious with a girl. I want to understand what her last relationships were like, what she liked, what she didn't like, why they failed. That gives me a lot of insight into who she is as a person. 
and you know what we can do different in this relationship. Um, I mean, I may not bombard her with this on the first date. If it comes up organically, I'll ask. Uh, hey, when was the last? When was your last serious relationship? Uh, maybe second date. But yeah, overall, I like to ask those questions. Yes. Yeah, I like I like to troll girls with like really personal questions. Like she's like talking about like she's telling me, yeah, you know, I like, broke up with this guy. Or, yeah, I'm like, oh, was his dick too small? Or like, was his dick too big? Like, yeah, I don't know, it doesn't like one or the other. Like, oh, did he have like a micro penis? Like, she's like, what? No. I was like, listen, if you had a micro penis, okay. Like, I don't judge you. Like, you know, I I have a micro penis too. You know, we're like part of this. <laughs> she was at the micro penis club. You know, I saw him there. You know, we we high fived each other. Micro penis convention. But I would say also even with stuff like that, it should be congruent to your personality. I just have like a very troll-like sense of humor. So for me, like half the fun is just solely trolling people and like chicks. Um, like if you're that's not your personality. If you do the shit I do, it's gonna come off you know kind of weird and forced. Yeah, the congruence part is is key. For sure. It's definitely key. Um, all right, bro. Awesome fucking live Q&A. I know you don't do a lot of interviews, so it was awesome having you on. Uh, how can guys learn more about you, find out about your course and whatnot? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's been it's been fun. Um, I need to start doing live. I was telling guy Alex earlier, I'm going to start doing live uh, Q&As as well, probably on YouTube. Um, first guest? Sure, I'll do it, Vadim. Uh, I'm down. That's right. That's right. You don't even you don't even need to say, it, bro. Bring on the online dating expert. Something yeah, you know, yeah, I'm yeah. not uh, super experienced with. So, um, but more information. Go on my YouTube channel. Watch my videos. Um, you know, on my website, you can you can uh, see access to my course and our bootcamp programs. We haven't updated the dates because of COVID and stuff. But you can reach out for consultation and stuff. And uh, I have a free. Under a lot of my YouTube videos, I have a free four video workshop on on approaching, oh. cold approach and stuff. It's very it's very insightful. There's a lot of value there. I would say check that out. Um, but yeah, website honestsignals.com, YouTube honest signals. I have an Instagram page too where I post a bunch of shit. I haven't been active with the stories, but uh, we'll start again soon. But yeah, check it out. See if you vibe with it and uh try to learn a thing or two what are some of your next boot camps coming up you say you're gonna do one in Vi miami at some point right i'm planning to do one in miami uh end of end of april one or two right now yeah let's say one or two right now once for sure i'm not sure about the second one just yet so last couple of weekends of uh of april and then i'm going to be doing one to two boot camps in toronto end of may and then the the summer is undecided yet. It's either going to be in Europe or uh, in Toronto. So I'll be doing maybe one to two boot camps at the end of every every month. So uh, reach out uh, if you're interested. Our shit is our boot camps are very intense. And as an additional bonus, if you take a boot camp with Vadim in Miami, I will drop by for like half an hour, an hour, and answer true. your related questions, and that you know true. help you select proper dick pics or whatever it is that you need help with. That is true. That is true. Yeah. yeah. So we'll coordinate on that on that front. Sounds good. All right, bro. Uh, just stay on for a second after I end the broadcast. Just want to discuss yeah. something. But yeah. All right. Awesome, guys. Thanks for coming in. We have an awesome, some awesome videos coming out this week. We just finished a Tinder experiment where we tested what it was like to you know be uh, what Tinder was like for a hot girl and what Tinder was like for an unattractive girl. And the results were very, very interesting. So we're going to show that. Um, and also, we have a live Q and A next Sunday with. RSD Alex, old RSD Alex, Alex Social now, so he's going to be coming on. That one's going to be a little bit earlier because he's on England time, but anyway, so stay tuned for that. We have some awesome shit, and I'm going to finally announce it. We got the one and only Sarah J coming on for a podcast, so finally going to accomplish my dream of cracking into the porno world. Uh, ultimately, as we all know, the end goal is for me to start doing porn. You know, that's kind of where this whole thing has been going. So, yeah. All right, awesome, guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you guys soon.